Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Three Point Weekly. It is the annual award show for Three Point Weekly between awards, all NBA, all rookie, all defense. We'll have it all covered tonight, and we'll be sure to want to hear your thoughts in the comments throughout. But as we do go through these awards, be sure that you do leave a like down below and subscribe as we get through these awards at the end of the season, which of course means we have our postseason and play in tournament coming up next week. We're going to have Super Mario Hoops here on the pod next week to discuss some of those predictions. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But before, before we do get too ahead of us ourselves, we do have to do our awards show tonight. But before we get into that, I don't want to get your thoughts, especially briefly from you, Reek, because we just did just have the Drew Holiday extension tonight just before the pod. And as a Celtics fan, of course, you guys made the big trade to get him this offseason. How do you feel now after seeing him for a season, making sure you have him long term to make sure he's around for a few more potential title runs over the next four years? Yeah, um, good to get him extended for sure. I think the surprising part was like the four year deal um, just because like the way he's kind of talked about you know, not knowing how long his career is going to be. Um, but, you know, definitely good. I mean, obviously he's contributed to, you know, them being the best team in the NBA this season, 60-plus win season. He's been great. I think adjusting to kind of a different role than what he's been asked to do the last few years. But, you know, he's really honed in on that, being like a Swiss Army knife defensively, which he's always been a great defender, but doing just a ton of different things on that side of the floor. And, yeah, I mean, obviously everything's going to be predicated on how this team performs in the postseason, if they can win a championship. But, it's good to get, you know, him locked up long term. You already got the Jays locked up long term. Derek Weiss, the next guy that you would hope to get some type of long term security from. But yeah, I wasn't really like shocked. I mean, the number kind of seems like crazy, but you got to pay to keep your guys, especially in the cap, you know, the cap situation that's going forward with the new CBA. Like you kind of got to pay to keep your guys around and stuff. So, you know, I didn't have an issue with like the number that they gave him. He's been very productive this season. Shot the three ball well. So, you know, glad to have Drew around and hopefully this translates into some really good playoff success coming up. She so said that was a four year deal for him. Yeah, four, 135. Oh, right. I'm just, that's shocking to me just because I feel like the big thing was that he was going to retire after his current deal was up. So for him to extend for four, not even like two or three, that's, that's honestly, that 135 surprising. be talking. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, money talks, and I mean, look at them versus number two in the East. Like they, they have that conference pretty on lock right now. I mean, playoffs is a different beast, but as it looks right now, I mean, they're heavily favored. So he could add some hardware, and he's definitely adding some money. So I mean, that that's definitely he could be talked out of retirement for that easily. Definitely hard to hard to turn down 135 mil. That's for damn sure, especially when you're playing on a contender like he is now. And talking about hardware, we might talk about him later tonight as we get to our especially our all defense teams. So might not be the end of Drew Holiday talks tonight. But without further ado, let's move into the awards portion of the stream. We'll get done with the non-player award first. We'll start with Coach of the Year and move our way through. So I'll let you go ahead first, Gabe. Coach of the year, who do you got? All right, so um, the way I formatted my whole ballot was, so I put the winner, I put a runner-up, and then after that I just put getting votes, kind of like a third place, but some of them have two or three guys just if I wanted to shout more people out. Because, you know, some guys not going to win the award, but, you know, every year they at least release the top ten. So that's kind of how I structured it. So getting votes for this award, I'll start from the bottom. I put Joe Missoula, pretty self-explanatory, coach of the best team in the league by a long shot in their conference. And with their dominance, I, I, he'll definitely get some votes. Willie Green, you know, he just continues to really succeed in New Orleans. And then that stacked West, it seems like they've been pretty safely outside of the play-in tournament for some time now. So to be able to maintain that level of consistency and even with a healthy Zion, it's still still impressive to me that he's able to do that just because of how competitive that conference is. And then uh, Tom Thibodeau, the Knicks have just continued to be so good. And even in the face of, you know, Julius Randle going out, OG Ananobi going out, they still continue to be very successful and very steady. So I think he'll receive some votes for that as well. This is the most I have on any award. So bear with me here. My runner up is Chris Finch. 
the Timberwolves, you know, went from last year being one of the most disappointing teams in the league, catching so much flack from everyone. So this year, having that excellent defense, we know usually compared to offense, I feel like defense usually is a little bit more aligned with coaching. And he had Rudy Gobert last year, didn't immediately translate, but he was able to figure out those schemes to get them to play the right way. So where it's really working this year, and it's led them to being the one seed. So he, he definitely was in strong contention. But my winner is Mark Dagnall. I think what OKC has done, they've made a bigger jump than Minnesota has. They're so young. They have a lot of players who are in their first or second year. And he's just managed to put them all in the right place to succeed. And you see almost every guy that gets rotational minutes on that roster really just put in, in the best position to do what they do, whether it's Ludor on the defensive end. You know, you got J-Dub who's just sending in a star status. He's got Chet looking like a first-year all-defensive player. You know, Shea goes out, gets his 30 every night. Top to bottom, it seems like everybody there is just just coached so well. So, I mean, for that mixed with them being the two seed when they weren't even a playoff team last year, I think he's almost a shoe in. I love those shout-outs. Um, I'll talk about Chris Finch real quick because he was the first coach off of my list. But I just want to give them a lot of credit, the Timberwolves as a whole, because one – like early on in the season when they were, you know, the one C pretty consensus, you know, for the early part of the year, the just like the history that I know, I was just expecting like a fall off at some point. But they continue been there all year. And then even after the cat injury, they were they fell like two games back of the one seed. And we know in the Western Conference, two games back, that's a lot. And they've since fought back and they're right now, I think, tied for the one seed. So like that's just super yeah, that's super impressive. They have a real chance to just secure the one seed overall. Like that's very impressive. And like Gabe said, that a lot of that is their defense, and that goes to what Chris Finch has been able to do. He really has his fingerprint all over uh, this team, especially on that side of the floor. Um, but he was the first coach on my list. I had to give Joe Mazzulla the third spot because, I mean, Boston has far and away been the best team in basketball all season. Top five offense, top five defense, and man, he just has his team working like a well-oiled machine. Despite the talent that's there, it's not always easy to get it clicking as fast as they got it clicking, adding two really key pieces in KP and Drew Holiday, and he's been able to do that. Um, So I just had to give him that third spot. Jamal Mosley was my runner-up. Um, The Magic have a chance to get the two seed. Like, they're still right there to get an opportunity to get the two seed. And, you know, even though that team offensively is not great, that defense is real. And that defense, you know, you could see the last couple of seasons – They've been pretty sound on that side of the floor. And for him to get a young team to really buy in defensively in this day and age of a lot of three-point shooting, off-the-dribble stuff, offensive league, he's got those young guys really bought in defensively. So I had to give him a big shout-out there. But I'm with Gabe, Dagonal, Coach of the Year, OKC. Um, we all expected them to take a jump this season. I don't know if we all expected them to take, you know, a potential one-seat jump. That's how good they've been. Shea, MVP caliber. And like Gabe mentioned, like a bunch of guys, you know, have really been playing well under Dagonal. I think he's, you know, obviously, you know, I, he's my coach of the year, but I just think he's one of the best minds in basketball overall. And he's done a phenomenal job this season. Excited to see, you know, how he's, his coaching really translates into the playoffs for real. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. I got no suspense to add here because my list is identical to what you had, Reek Dagnall winning it, mostly second and Missoula getting that nod in third, like you say, because Boston have just been so dominant this year. But I'll touch on Dagno first. Like you said, just the way this team has been playing, similar to like you said with Orlando, like the team's bought in defensively as young as they are. Like you mentioned, Gabe, everyone on this team just knows how to produce. They know their role. They know what they need to do, whether it's Kendrick Williams off the bench, whether it's Isaiah Joe, whether it's a rookie in Case and Wallace, whether it's Gordon Hayward coming in and playing a role now after the deadline. Everyone just comes in and makes an impact on this team regardless of who's in and out of the lineup, even Jalen Williams, not the rising star Jalen Williams, but their backup big. He's been great this year. Like They just have everyone always seemingly firing on all cylinders and filling into their role, and Dagno deserves a lot of credit for that and the jump they've made. And like you said, Reek, we expected a bit of a jump. I was pushing for it. Even this big of a jump wasn't really expected by me or many other people, so... Credit to them for a good of a season they've had, and Dagnall reserves a lot of the credit for that. And similarly with Mosley and Orlando, 
even though they've dealt with a lot of injuries this year. I mean, Wendell's been in and out of the lineup, as he often is. Markel, of course, missed a lot of time early and hasn't really found his groove since. So they've been dealing with their own issues, and they just haven't really skipped a beat. Had a bit of a slump a couple of months ago and right back up. And like you say, still fighting for the two seed, playing Milwaukee tonight, fighting for that. So credit to them and credit to Mosley for that. Those are probably my top three, but like you guys said with Chris Finch, definitely deserves some love there. Another great year from the Timberwolves in terms of a bounce back from where they were, but a lot of good shouts for this this year. A lot of fun teams making a rise up as opposed to just that one team that's typically made it that rise up the West the last few years. we got a got a bit of variety this year. It's a nice change. There's a lot shout of really to, good coaches. I was going to say shout out to e so because – for you sure. know, they, they've been fighting all year, man. And look, we, we gave Houston a lot of hell in the offseason, but they played some pretty inspiring basketball this year. Yeah, they would, I mean, amazing even they job. went on that run. I mean, they almost put themselves in position to be in it. They did. I can't believe I snubbed uh, – I can't believe I snubbed Jamal Mosley, man. That's crazy. I, <laughs> it, it was bound to happen. Somebody was bound to get snubbed. I think but, your list yeah, was good. I think your list was pretty good, though. You know, I'm not mad. There's, at a, there's so many. There's a there's lot of so guys many. you could have considered this yeah. year. I mean, we didn't even mention Will Hardy, and he could still be someone yeah. who could deserve some love. So, thinking I mean, about Will Hardy. I love yeah. Will Hardy. That's my guy. If Utah was a little bit better, I mean. I... Yeah. The year that they finally make the jump, he's in the ballot for sure. He might not win it, but he's definitely in the ballot. Yeah. The way I explain Dagano, I think Will Hardy is also one of the best basketball minds out definitely. there. Definitely. I love the headphones, Katie. I'm be, I'm gonna be honest. Can we do MVP first? I feel like we always leave it to last, and it's so unsuspenseful by that point. And this year, I don't know if there's that much suspense either. But can we just kill the elephant in the room? Let's go for it. <laughs> I think I think some some people are making arguments for a different guy. I, don't know. I think I think it's viable to do so. Um, Okay, I didn't have any runner uh, uh, like honorable mentions. I think the top three for me is the top three. Yeah, um, I agree. I got Shea at three, and look, he's been, I can't even like nitpick Shea. He's been phenomenal all season. I just think Luca's been better, and now that Dallas has been winning games, I have Luca at two because of that. You know, the team success was always the thing that was kind of dragging him behind. You know, the in the MVP talks, but. They've been winning a lot of games since they have lineups that actually play meaningful minutes together, you know, over like 200 minutes, which they were just lacking all year. And Luca has taken his game to in another step above what he's already been doing. Like he's damn near averaging a triple double. I mean, just every night it's explosive offensive production. And just I think all around his game has gotten better, too. So he I can understand if there's a case to be made, but I just think Nikola Jokic has just been not only the best player, but he's, he literally speaks most valuable player. You look at the on-off rating, like this team without Jokic on the floor is a bad basketball team. They're not good without Nikola Jokic on the floor, but when he's in the game, they're, they're damn near just like damn near impossible to beat, like in really big games, meaningful games. They're tough to beat because Nikola Jokic is that impactful, especially on the offensive side of the floor. He is just that impactful of a player to where, you know, you just know, like, I know it must be fun being a Denver Nuggets fan because, you know, in those close games, Jokic is going to get you a good shot, whether he's shooting to himself or he's creating. And for me, he's been doing it all year, and they've been winning, getting better all year, more so than Luka, which I think kind of holds him back a little bit because Denver's fighting for the one seed. Dallas could maybe get top four if they get a little bit of help down the stretch. But, you know, that's kind of the splitting hairs thing. All three of those guys for me have been just absolutely phenomenal this season. But I just think yo, I would prefer Jokic this season over, you know, Luke and Shea. Eight names, Reek. Eight names. Are you serious? Bill, eight? Bill, no. <laughs> Let me hear me out. Hear me out. Eight, eight names. Walk okay. with me. Walk okay. with me. Eight names. Bill Russell. Wilt Chamberlain. Kareem. Moses Malone. Larry Bird. Magic Johnson. Michael Jordan and LeBron James. And now Nikola Jokic is going to be the ninth player to win three MVPs. Because what can I even say? I hated year after year, time after time. I said, oh, this is Giannis. 
This is Embiid. Give it to anybody else. But eventually, you just cannot deny this consistency in production. And no matter what your definition of MVP is, whether it's winning, whether it's statistical production, whether it's how bad your team would be without you, he just checks checks every single box. Every single box. You take him off Denver, lottery team. What's his stats? Almost a triple-double, if not a full triple-double. I'd have to check basketball reference, but we know what's around there. The winning, they're a top three seed. What am I even supposed to say? Luka's been a monster, but the body of work, Jokic has really been there all season. Luka, second half, definitely has turned it up, definitely has been phenomenal. But obviously, when you're splitting hairs, like you have to do when all these players are playing so well, Jokic has just been the model of consistency for not even just this season. Obviously, this season is what counts. But for like the past five seasons, I mean, you rarely get an off night, and his bad games is a career night for about 95% of players. Um, Just to round it out, just for logistics, um, am I getting votes? I put Shea and I, I snuck in Jason Tatum just because when you're the best player on the best team, I think he's going to get some votes. But beyond that, the exact same uh, top three as you because I had Shea in that range as well, just with how good OKC has been and with him being sort of at the forefront of that. Yeah, okay. I, I agree in that. I think Shea... Jokic and Doncic all in their years are having MVP caliber seasons. There's no doubt about that. And in any given year, if another player gets a 10 game injury or team slips a few spots in the standing, like they all have MVP cases. Uh, It's another great year for that in terms of having a debate uh, and being able to make arguments rightfully or not, where I can log on to Twitter in any given day. And I know I'm going to see Shea arguments, Jokic arguments and Luke arguments, and I can listen to all of them. They all have some validity to them. Uh, Shea is where I also have third as well. Uh, he's just a step below where Jokic and Luka are at, are at. And again, like we just said, there's no knock to that. He's been brilliant this year. Big reason why OKC are having such a good year. Big reason why Dagno's being in consideration for coach of the year alongside as good of a coach as he is. Big reason why they're going to be having some level of aspirations in the postseason, even though this is their first time really getting into the postseason proper. So, Shout out to Shea, great year for him, but just a step beside beside Luka and Jokic this season. Jokic is my number two, and I think he's going to win the award. I don't have any doubt about that. If I was predicting award winners, I think he's my one, but another, like, like you guys said, another great year for him, another MVP season for him, and there's no step backwards in his production over the last two, three years to this year for him to not get the award for me. But I, Luca's too good, man. I, I have to give Luca his respect. I have to show the fact now that this is going to be a 50 win basketball team. They're getting win 50 tonight. And he's finally had, although only probably a five seed, very good team success this year. They're finishing the year strong with this now nine going to be, 10 wins in their last 11 after tonight, after beating the Heat. So great win for the Mavs in terms of how they've played this year. Great win for Luka in terms of how he's finished this season. Big kudos to the front office with the moves they made at the deadline. That's all helps. Uh, But Luka's just been ridiculous. Career high and assists, I believe, is tied. Rebounds, three-point percentage, significantly above anything he's had, near 39%, which is one of the biggest knocks on him sometimes is that three-point shooting efficiency. That's improved. Just ridiculous season. I mean, 34, 9, and 10 is (laughs) is absurd. And Jokic is putting up similar just with a few less points. But to get that from a guard, to have that type of rebounding numbers, to do it on the efficiency he's doing it on this year, to do it on a team that didn't have great supporting cast, especially to start the year. Kyrie was out for a lot of the season and then kind of ramping back up to where he is now, where he's back at his all-star and borderline all-NBA self. He's been playing at an MVP caliber level for a couple of years now. This is the best Mavericks team he's been on. This is also the healthiest he's been since his rookie year. Uh, Jokic, great argument. I think he wins it, but Luke is my pick for the award this year. 
I, I hope Luka does win it, to be honest. Not because I, I love Jokic, too. But, man, th- this would be my argument for Luka. I heard a stat. It was either they just had a lineup that crossed 100 minutes played together, and it was a post-trade deadline lineup. Like, it had Gafford. Yeah. It had P.J. Washington in that lineup. And that just speaks to, I think, how good Luka is that if you just put – a little bit of talent around him and obviously Kyrie Irving being great, you know, when he's been, you know, available to season, I think he would be an all NBA player if um, he had the games played more, you know, put down, but man, you just put a little bit of defensive talent around Luka Doncic and you see just how quickly this team kind of figured everything out. And they've been playing some really good basketball second half of the season. Like Luke is that good. And then the numbers that you just even said, like those are video game numbers. Like those are 2k my career numbers insane production and there's i mean there's i think there's a legit case because it's not like you know the they're the five seed and it's not like they're like you know 12 games back or anything like it's not like denver is running away denver's fighting for the one seed but they're like six games ahead of dallas so i don't i think like you can make similar arguments for like a couple of Jokic's mvps like there's a year where Jokic was like a six seed but it's like oh you know he's only like you know, he's won 48 games and, and B won 49 games and Giannis won 50 games. And that was their argument. So I think you can make similar arguments for Luka. And I, I hope he wins it because I think Luka is deserving of an MVP. But, yeah, like you said, Jokic will probably win it, you know, because everything kind of points towards Jokic. I'm um, just winning the award. But, you know, it's been a phenomenal race nonetheless. I'm glad Luka got back into the race. And I can only imagine if Embiid was able to stay healthy this season, like, this race would be kind of insane for real. Yeah, where Luke is at right now is almost like that Dwayne Wade or Kobe for a long time that they finally got it, where always MVP caliber, but just never seemed to lock down the award. Just always up there, like top two, top three. Even like James Harden before 2018, like he always would finish at the top, but never quite get there. Yep. So if he was able to finally get one, I mean, that would, that would be amazing because he's been at that level and, for as much crazy stats as we've seen this year, like 70-point games, people putting up 50 every other night, these just crazy, just like like you said, my career type stat lines being put up all the time. For somebody to really be such an anomaly that they're even sticking out among that, that's generational play right there. The one other person I want to give some love to, Joel Embiid was on his way to having this award on lock until he went out with injury. So I don't want to let that go unknown. (laughs) It shows too, man. Yeah, he, like, he put up a monster season again, and I think we'd really be talking about him going back to back right now, if not for him going down. Hell, since we give him more, since we give him more love, Jalen Brunson, my goodness, man, this guy has been fucking incredible, bro. With all the injuries, you know, basically their big addition, OG and anobi has been missing a bunch of time. Julius Randle hasn't played since January. This guy has been every single night. You know he's shooting 30 shots, but he's putting up a lot of points too, and he's hella productive. The Knicks are in that range to kind of fight for a top four seed too. So he's been phenomenal. He definitely deserves some love. He'll probably get like fifth place votes for me or something like that, but he's been great. Definitely. 60 points. Crazy performances. I know. It seems like every time, complete side tension, but it seems like every time players have these crazy stat totals now, it's always in a loss. Take that as you will. He took like 47. He took like 47 shots, too. I love that. Like, just it's like just put him up. Just put him up, bro. Just put him up, bro. Like, people were mad at DeJounte Murray. I'm like, hey. Hey, if you got to shoot, shoot 44 shots. Who the hell shots, else is creating shots on that team? Other than Bogdanovich, uh, like no bro. one else is creating anything. you telling me bro. DeAndre Hunter is going to create 20 <laughs> shots? Like, come on now. Sadiq Bay is even injured. Like, it's no what's, shot. What's his name? Like, Kregi's getting starting minutes and stuff <laughs> Kregi, like that. Like, yeah. like bro. I... <laughs> he's been shooting well, but, like, he ain't exactly creating pull-up middies. Like, exactly. They got to blow it up. <laughs> if, if I can't hope for one team to blow it up, that's perfect for me watch. Atlanta if I Hawks. Blow it up. They're, if they're I blow gonna go Trey Trey Young, please. To Trey San Antonio. Trey Young, Spurs. Anywhere. Anywhere, bro. I, I just want him out of Atlanta. 
Spurs. That's a side. That's a big side tangent though. But yes. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad Dev had. I'm glad Dev had Luca though because it would have been boring if we all had the same same winner. So Luca definitely definitely deserves. I think he. I hope he wins it. That's that's just how I feel. Yeah. I so. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk defense, gentlemen. Um, I want to get into this because uh, <laughs> that's probably the most obvious honestly, word, to be honest. I think it is <laughs> locked down, but I'm I'm honestly more curious to see how high you guys might have a certain guy. Um, I think there was a lot of people in contention for this one too. I like you said the top spot was pretty locked down, but um, as far as like who's gonna come in second. Who's gonna come in third? That's hilarious in the comments. But um, <laughs> talk about bro. <laughs> talk about. A, a wedgie, a wedgie is crazy, bro. <laughs> that is atomic. That's hey, bro, I'm gonna start using that. That's my new adjective, bro. This, this atomic. Oh man, I, I gotta, I gotta steal that. But uh, yeah, on, on defense. Is this Rudy's award? Are we are we all in agreement on this being Rudy's award? Okay, one thousand percent. Got to be Rudy. But other than like Rudy. Who who else has who else has four and things, bro? Does Ben, ben, ben Wallace got four? Dwight only ben has, has three, four, right? Mutombo I think Ben has four. four. I feel like I'm pretty Mutombo sure Ben has four. Matumbo's up there too. The white won those three in a row. Ben won four. Ben was split up by Ron Artest, though. Better World Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Matumbo and Ben are the only ones. Yeah. Dwight's got three. So, and then there's six Gobert, guys. Two. Gobert is about to join some rarefied air. It's not like we're just seeing history this year. A guy gets his third MVP. A guy gets his fourth defensive player of the year. I'm going to be honest, y'all. I don't even want to get into Go Bear because we know Timberwolves defense is like best in the league by a mile. By, and he's yeah. very clearly at the helm of that. They've got other great pieces, but he's very, very obviously at the helm of that. Um, my runner up was was Wimby. Had to be. I don't think that's even I don't even think that's outlandish. I th- he really takes this award if the Spurs aren't a bad team defense, but and Screw the blocks, bro, because, you know, people be like, oh, he's a great defender, like, because he gets a lot of block shots. And then you get guys like Hassan Whiteside that are, like, averaging a bunch of blocks but just jumping at everything. Don't even look at the blocks. Just look at how teams have to change their whole offensive game plan because of how much space this guy covers. That wingspan, that mobility, obviously the verticality, he, he just – he just changes the floor so much. And really, it's it's just the fact that the team defense is not very good that really drags him down because you can't be on a bottom 10 defense and win this award. But as a standalone player, oh, my God. As a rookie as well, when we're talking about rarefied air, Ben Wallace, Mutombo, Rudy, people who are going to get four, in ten years, he might, he might get like six. Yeah, in ten years, yeah. this, he stay, this if he guy, can stay healthy, he's gonna get like six um, in a decade. Yeah, he span. might, he might blow all them up the water. Like Rudy's got four, he's got his now, but like he might not be seeing no more because Wemby uh, might be able to sweep them things for a while. Give them a couple good players. Obviously, their draft pick should be good. I believe they have it. I, I would imagine they have it. They do. So they should have. They yep. should have a, a good draft pick this year. Maybe they can pull off a trade, get some talent in there, and he could be jumping these lists quick. I wrote two other names down. Bam Adebayo always seems to make his way onto these lists. The Heat are still towards the top of the league in defense this year, and we know, as usual, he is the helm of that. Don't really want to talk about it too much because we've been hearing this for years now. Like I was saying earlier with like the Luka MVP thing, is always at the top, never seems to be the top spot. And then – Another hear me out. I did write down Chet Holmgren. And I've really wanted to give him his flowers. Because OKC, kind of like the Timberwolves, they have a lot of pieces on the roster that are good defensive pieces. But for Chet to come in year one 
and be so good as the main defensive big. I said before this season, all offseason, I said, I think OKC is really going to struggle on the defensive side, especially in the paint, because Chet, kind of a slim guy. Like, he can get good blocks, be great help side, but I don't know if he can really defend the other team's best big man every night. And he's been he's been really good. Really good. So I mean, he, he's really stepped up like and just taking taking charge of their defense. And there's once again it's towards the top of the league as well. So for him being able to be a defensive anchor year one, not at the level to win the award, but at the level where I definitely wanted to give him his flowers. I like it. I like it. Yeah, he's he's made that team go as far as winning goes because the defense at the back line really got cleaned up this season because they didn't have that type of, you know, rim protection the last couple of years. So he's definitely been been major. Um, yeah, Rudy's the obvious. I mean, I think the only other award that's more obvious is rookie of the year, to be honest. Like Rudy is clearly the winner here. Um my two and three, like, were kind of interchangeable. Um the numbers don't really back it up, but I still think Anthony Davis had he's had one of his best defensive seasons, even though like the the like on off numbers are like defensively the Lakers are better with him on off the floor, which that's the one time I'll look at the number and I'll be like, that's that's a lie. Like that's not true. Anthony Davis is still that dude defensive. I feel I think he's had one of his better defensive seasons. And I had Wemby in that top three as well. I think individually he's like second in defensive rating. His team just sucks. And when he's off the floor, they suck even more. So, you know, once they get good, he's gonna he is gonna win a lot of those awards, like we said. Um, but I do want to give a shout out to one guy. It's tough for perimeter guys to win it, but Herb Jones, that guy's been so damn good defensively. Gotta give him a shout out, you know, on this on this award list, man. But he's been great, you know, not on Herb. I love that hashtag. He's been locking up some of the best, you know, wing uh, wings and guards in the league. So he's been great. Always love a good Herb joke. Definitely yeah. will not be the last time you hear his name <laughs> tonight. That is for sure. Um, yeah, of course, Rudy's my first guy in the list. And as I'd alluded to when Gabe mentioned his list earlier, Wemby was my second guy. And like you said, like the block numbers are crazy. His numbers stand out, but just a pure rim deterrence, like. Other than Rudy, maybe at some points in time in his prime, a little bit removed from that now, although obviously still great. Like, I've just never <laughs> seen someone in the league have guys come in on a fast break, two on one, three on one, and they just get nothing. And it's just like, it's not a block. It's not a steal. It's just, I'm there. What are you going to do? And they do nothing. And it's crazy. It, it, no one's reached that level of impact, especially as a rookie. Uh, it's just absurd to see where the ceiling potentially is for him as he continues to grow. Um, so I like him at two. AD was my number three. Uh, I really like the AD shout here this year as well. Like you say, Reek stole another really good defensive year for him as well. Uh, not quite on the cusp of being able to be Depoy. Big part of that is the Minnesota defense numbers compared to the Lakers, but still a great defensive year for him. Uh, very much deserves to be in this conversation. And Bam is another guy I had as an honorable mention as well. So just guys like AD and Bam, they might not be winning the award, but they're consistently in the mix. They're consistently amongst the best defenders in the league, and they definitely deserve their respect in that conversation. Love it. I love, I love the Bam shout-out, too. Bam's always – that goes without saying just how great he is defensively, and it's every year to, with him. You know what they say, the best way to protect the rim is to stop them before they even get there. <laughs> That's real. That's real. Um, do y'all want to get Rookie of the Year out the way? Yeah, let's get that one out of the way while we're on the Wemby talk because anyone else picking Wemby here, I got some questions. Okay, is it Wemby, sure. Chet, Brandon Miller? Yes, Anybody yes. have any disputes? Okay. <laughs> Brandon has been great, but he started a little slow. Chet Bro. came out the gate hot. Any, and he's still any other year. He's, he's good. Any other year, man, Brandon Miller would be like – he would have like a, a case to win this award almost any other 100%. year. 100%. I think Brandon had that, that Trey Young type thing where his like – his second half was really good. So, like, he made the push. 
But kind of like what I was saying with Jokic for MVP early, like the complete body of work and the consistency throughout the season, I think Chet and Wimby both had him on that. I think even Wimby, like, he was, like, still, like, playing solid, like, good basketball early on. But the last, I want to say, it's been a while. It's been, like, three months maybe. Like, yeah, like 30, 35 games. Top top 20 player in the league. Damn. Like, he's been that good. Uh, he's a, he's <laughs> a proof quick. But he, yeah. out of the three, Brandon, I would say, came in the weakest. But, I mean, he's had more opportunity, of course, with LaMelo going out for the second half of the season as well. So, yeah. I mean, there's more factors at play. Definitely. And Terry Rozier got traded. Gordon Hayward got traded. Yeah. Only guy really taking up shots is Miles Bridges. He's still taking up shots, but but that's about it. And considering Miller was starting on the bench to start the year, I mean he's he's definitely progressed in terms of roles on that team. So yeah, no, it's definitely a uh, definitely a good shout for him. I mean, we were talking about this award four or five months ago. Hawkes would have been in the mix and yep. Miller very much made that jump. So um yeah, no, like like you say, definitely would have had a case in a lot of other years. Similar to like we said about MVP, like in any other year, all three of these guys would have had an argument to win the award. But unfortunately for Chet and Brandon Miller to just exist in a world where women Yamas also win their class competing for the award. So Man. tough luck for them. Man. Man, Wimby. Wimby, yeah, Wimby's crazy. This is like the most obvious rookie of the year, I think, ever that I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough to deny this one, especially uh, yeah. like I say, how he's played over the last few months. Like defense just continues to get more elite. Three point shooting goes from like 30, 32 percent to damn near forty percent. Like it's it's ridiculous. Forty percent on pull up threes, like bro. Playmaking's gotten way better. <laughs> like it, I mean, one's this obvious. Like I mean, Blake Griffin was an All Star year one. John Wasso had a good rookie year though, but yeah, Blake was great. Yeah. Like. Even like, even you, like look at LeBron, like him and Melo were still super close. Even yeah. Luca's rookie year, like trade the Trey Young second half, like you said, Gabe kind of people yeah. like hold on. Even mm-hmm. I think Paolo should have been unanimous last year. I don't. I think he was like one vote off. But mm-hmm. J Dub second half of the season, people were like, hold on, maybe J Dub is you know they're, they're winning games. And Lamelo were kind of like that too, from what I remember. I think Lamelo ended up getting. Lamelo won it though, didn't he? He did. He did. That feels like so long ago. Like, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah and had like that second half surge too. Yeah. 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 I'll still maintain that that J Dub push last year was a crazy propaganda narrative. Not to say he was bad, but Bro, like, he was really like, good. They were so still cool. levels apart. And that, that was nothing against J Dub, but I mean, yeah, like, the one option on a team competing for the two seed right now. So. Both, he is that both man. really good players and really good years at the same time. That's a heck of a draft class. Like Jabari got better this season. Chet, you know, this being his rookie year, but he was in that draft class. Like really, yeah. really strong draft class. Very strong. Hmm. Where are we where are we off to next? We got what sixth man and most improved. And we got clutch player to deal with still too, which might have to. I did not even write anything down. (laughs) uh, That award still is not real to me. (laughs) I wrote like my first two names I took serious, and then like my last name I'm just like. There's only two serious candidates, anyways. I think so. Voting for Cam Thomas for clutch player. Who were your Who were your two serious candidates? My two serious candidates were Demar and Steph. Okay, I had Demar and Kyrie as my top two. Okay. Okay. Kyrie's Kyrie's fair. Kyrie's fair. And I picked them to win the award this year, so I'm all for that. But I had DeMar first. (laughs) (laughs) Mainly because if this award was around uh, the season where he was going nuclear, he would have won it. So, you know, let's just give it to him this year. The Bulls need something to to cheer about, I guess. Yeah, that would definitely help. I mean, he's he's second in clutch points this year, first in shots and clutch time. He's he's definitely got a case for it. That's um, my third kind of was late surge. So my third, and this is only because I saw a stat like he shoots like eighty percent in clutch time. I put J Dub at three, <laughs> 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 only because I saw that stat a couple weeks ago that he shoots like eighty percent in the clutch. So you know, give me Cam Thomas good. off aura. That's that's my only pick. 
But that <laughs> Brooklyn's never in the clutch, though. They're too bad yeah, to be no, in clutch they, time. <laughs> they haven't had a clutch game in like two months. I feel, I feel like <laughs> they played the Raptors tonight. We probably let them get in clutch time against us. <laughs> it's, it's really like it's Brooklyn and Toronto be putting their bad. They're the so final bad. scores they've been putting up like 88 points in a game. I'm like, bro, in this in this point economy, have you seen the scoring economy right now, bro? Bro. You get a hundred. They, they both crossed a hundred tonight, hundred and six to hundred and two. Shocker, shocker indeed. Maybe maybe Cam Thomas got some clutch points tonight. Then he's helping your case. Okay, so we got Kyrie, Demar, and Cam Thomas as clutch players of the year. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, uh, let's uh, let's go to six man. Let's let's go to six man. I like it. I have six a most was interesting player range. Sure. So let's, let's go. Ooh, six six man of the year. I definitely have an all order pick here as well. <laughs> go ahead, get it started in game. Let's go with the vibes. The guy that I put in third. To be honest with you, if you had asked me a couple months ago, I probably would have given him the award. But upon review, I just think there's somebody who needs it a little bit more. In third place, I have Norman Powell. Norman Powell is a very dangerous player to have on the floor. If you look at all the options the Clippers have, Kawhi, Paul George, James Harden, the list goes on. When you have to guard all those guys, who does that leave open? Norman Powell. And Norman Powell, he can shoot that thing. And when he does, he's putting your team in trouble. He is not the guy you want to leave open, but he just keeps getting left open. And every time, he's going to make you pay. I think he's very well rounded. He fits in with whatever lineup they want to put. He can pretty much he can play a couple of different positions. I'm not saying he can play one through five or anything. He's got some versatility on him. Very good player. There's two other guys who I think are just a little bit better. In second place, I have Malik Monk. I really think this is more a uh, traditional six man of the year. Guy who gets a lot of buckets, guy who does a lot of exciting things. He's really big. Just what he does for the second unit, offensive explosions. He can just really go out and get you way too many buckets on any given night. Very dangerous, explosive player, microwave type player. In first place, though, the guy who I want to give the award, the all aura pick. Give it to Nas Reed, bro. Give it to Nas Reed. Nas. He, he's just – he's the MVP of the Timberwolves, bro. Ask any Timberwolves fan who their favorite player is. Some might give you Ant. Eh, the rest are going to give you Nas Reed. What do you want off the bench? Energy. Production. And if your starter is a little injured, you want that guy to be able to step up and really fill in those gaps. And every time Cat goes out, which he did for a stretch this year. He's missed about 20 games or so now. Nas Reed a dog. You put him in there, bro, you are confident that you are getting good production. But even when Cat is in there, you can put Nas Reed in a lineup with Gobert and Cat, and that lineup can still be decent. He can play with almost anybody on their team despite being a big. He can really step up if people aren't there and be super productive. I feel like he's got an underrated amount of versatility. He's got the energy, and he's got the raw production that you need off the bench. And this second unit is the second unit of the one seed in one of the toughest conferences that you've seen. And you know what that means? That means every minute counts. So if you're leading that bench unit, that's a lot of pressure. And for that, the 2024 six man of the year is Nas Reed. Love it. Love it getting Nas Reed show. You can go ahead, Dev. I will start with Nas Reed. Uh, he's my third. I had to make it on the ballot. Uh, there's a couple other guys I wanted to put ahead of him. I love that you gave him the award. I think it's a great pick, especially on vibes. Uh, like you say, for the Timberwolves from a fan perspective, and even just as a neutral perspective, love watching Nadir's Reed play basketball. Very fun player to watch. Very impactful player for the Timberwolves. Uh, so very happy to see him be near getting some recognition for this, most likely on a lot of formal ballots even still going into this award. Uh, before I get into my top two, I do want to preface that 
Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich was probably a guy who was going to have winning this award prior to the fact that he's now been starting for however long due to injuries in Atlanta. He's now up to 30 games started. Couldn't justify have him winning the award when he started about 35, 38% of his games this year. But prior to that, he probably was winning the award for me and his stats really haven't gone up as a starter. So it's not like a quickly case that was inflated the other year. So wanted to give him a quick shout out for that. My number two is Norm Powell. Uh, like you mentioned, Gabe, great season for him. And of course he's benefiting from being this secondary guy in LA, but we know he can do this even as a guy where he's more of a primary option. Like he was in Toronto back when he was dropping 20 on those trash Raptor teams <laughs> way back in the day before he got shipped for Gary Trent. So we know what he can do. And when he's sitting on the weak side on a team that has Kawhi PG and James Harden, he's a pretty dangerous threat and he's capitalizing and the production's there for it. And most importantly, for a guy that has that much opportunity, the efficiency is absurd as well. So great season for him. He comfortably comes in at number two. But even with the injury, Malik Monk still had to be my number one. Great year for him in Sacramento. Just continues to be elite since he's been there. Great score. Playmaking and decision-making continues to improve, especially compared to where he was where he entered the league, where it was like, I'm going to score or I'm nothing even on the offensive end, but passing's gotten better. Playmaking's gotten better. Can be a more of a versatile option for you on the offensive end. Now can run your second unit and doesn't just have to be the score. He can still initiate. He can get other guys involved. I love to see that progression from him. And as great as De'Aaron is, they need Monk on a lot of nights to give them some perimeter offense. And he does that at a very high level. Uh, Definitely deserves a shout here. And he's one of those guys like Norm Monk. Same thing as the prototypical guy but he fits the mold and he's played very much well enough to be considered in this conversation. I had the same exact order. Um, yeah. I, I don't really have much else to add. Just believe Monk won it for me because like, just like, like you said, Devin, like his importance off that bench for that team offensively is there. And there's nights where he can really just be like the, sometimes like the focal point on offense and, you know, whether it's as a scorer, like you mentioned, his playmaking has gotten a lot better. You know, he's super important for this for the team. You know, hopefully they make the playoffs because that'd be kind of sad if he wins the award and they're not even a playoff team. Nas Reed is there, Boom Powell's there, but he's been great um, even before the injury, though. Like you said, and still like he he's played like I think seventy three games this season, so that's like a a, a normal sample size. He's been great. Um, also, but yeah, shout out to Norm Powell. I mean kind of ample opportunity because you got three guys that have the basketball a lot, but he's made the most out of his opportunities and super efficient. Um, we know what he can do, whether he's starting, whether he's coming off the bench, like he's played, he's worn a lot of different hats in his career. So shout out to Norm. And then Nas Reed too, like you guys mentioned, he's been great. Everybody loves Nas Reed. I've never met anybody that has a bad thing to say about Nas Reed. Somebody had a Nas Reed sign at WrestleMania. That shows like Nas Reed is the people uh, shit, man. We love Nas uh, Reed. <laughs> yeah, we love him. But yeah, I, I was thinking about Bogdan too. Like he's been insane. But like you said, like he started a lot this season. That's just like th- that that's that tax, man. Like that's almost half the season, basically, you know, starting. Yeah. But yeah, kind of a I don't know. This I feel like there's usually a lot more like names in six man of the year, maybe that you would maybe think of for this award. But I don't know. This year just kind of seems like there's like three guys that you can really look at. Like we all had the same three guys in the top three. Yeah. This was one of those awards where I really thought it was going to be like one of you guys was going to have your number one, be somebody I like didn't even have on my list. (laughs) So for for us all end up with the same three, obviously I was the ottoman out in the winter, but I'm, I'm really, I'm feeling like how, how Devin was with his Luca pick. Like, I think if, if this was a prediction, I think you guys would be correct, but and, and Gabe's ballot, Nas read the goat, and that's all there is to it. The uh, the 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 greatest bench put the Gubba boat. <laughs> Welcome. I think we need another B in there, but best bench player of all time, greatest bench player of all uh, time. But but boat, <laughs> he's, he's the B boat. We'll walk with it, I guess. All right. All right. Work with me here. 
if, if anyone says it in five years time we'll know that it was first said on three point weekly and that's that's all that matters that's all that matters that can be the claim but yeah it was it was interesting with the award this year like you said reek it wasn't a ton of other prototypical guards like a monk like a norm that were fighting for the award like if someone else i was going to give consideration to it might have even been bobby portis it probably wasn't another guard if i was going to name the next name cole anthony didn't have quite as good of a back half of the year to the start of the year so he wasn't as, as much a consideration so uh, very interesting for how the award played out this year but hey i'm not predicting it but if Nas ends up winning i'm definitely not mad at it definitely be the people's winner you will not hear me complaining if Nasri wins the award at all. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. But with that, I think we need to move to what I would argue is the best award for predicting, even though we're usually terribly wrong because it's terribly hard to predict. But most improved player is always undefeated. It's always a good conversation. I just want to say, like, I, I, I'm kind of pissed Austin Reeves let me down that much, bro. Like, He's not even like in the top ten. <laughs> like I'm, I'm so mad he let me down like that, man. He was my guy gotcha. before the season. Just tragic, yeah, he, man. Just tragic. He is definitely not in the conversation. I'm gonna be wrong, but Jalen Johnson did me proud. I, I got no complaints. Hey, look, we said before, we were talking before the show. If he hit that 65 games mark, I don't think anybody should have won this award over him. Nah, he, Just my- he would have been, he would have been the guy for sure. And if not, he would have been at least top two. Okay. You know, I, I got a rant, so I'm, I'm gonna get my list out the way. Um, I did I threw Jalen Johnson honorable mentions because of the reasons we just talked about. Um, my third was Jonathan Kaminga. Insane jump. He had to threaten a trade request to get consistent minutes. And when he got those consistent minutes, he's been the Warriors like a top three player on that team, most times top two, in my opinion. The counting numbers are there, you know, just on court wise, he looks more comfortable, looks like a more a better player. And obviously it's like, yeah, it's a year three guy, but somebody that hasn't gotten ample opportunity his first couple of years. So this is really like, I would damn near call this like his like sophomore season, basically, in my opinion. Like this is the type of player that, you know, he was projected to be, you know, coming out of the G League Ignite. He's been great. My number two, I really wanted to make a case for this guy to win the award, but kind of fell off a little bit, you know, towards the last like month or so. Kobe White, he's been great. Um took a ma- I think a massive leap just as obviously the counting numbers are up, but I think as a basketball player, as a point guard, he's just gotten better to where he looks like he could be somebody that's like a real building block on a team. And you know, the last couple of seasons you couldn't say that about Kobe White. Like it was looking like, you know, where is his next destination going to be? Is he a six man for the rest of his career? That's kind of how it looked, but He's made such an improvement this season. I'm proud of him because I didn't see that coming, but he's been great. I really wanted to make the case for him to win the award, but Tyrese Max is going to win it. And the improvement's been drastic. I can't deny that. The only thing that makes me mad is this is a guy that's already averaged 20 points for basically two seasons in the NBA. And he jumped, he jumped up to like 20, almost 26 a game, which is a big jump, but but man, that kind of irritates me just a little bit. This is somebody that's showing he was on that trajectory, and we always have this conversation about what a what a real most improved player is. Tyrese Maxey this season, I don't think embodies that, but his jump has been great, and I wouldn't be as mad as when they gave John Morant the award, but I'm still a little frustrated. Jalen Johnson getting hurt, I think. It's maybe that main reason. I think Alperin Sengu may be getting hurt, too, is another guy that could have had a, a shot at this award. But Maxi was my winner. He's probably going to win it, too. I don't love it, though. I would much rather it go to a Jalen Johnson to a Kobe White. But it's the times we're living in. So, yeah, that's that's my most improved play rant. I feel like it's I feel like this is a broken record. I do this every year, but. We just know the goalpost for this award moves all the time especially since John Morant won it. And that's my piece. I'm sticking to it. So I was trying to check my past notes and my predictions because I was thinking about it and I was like, I feel like I predicted Tyrese Maxey to win this award, even if it was not optimal. And I was going through 
my all my notes, and I really could not find my awards predictions for this season. But what I did find was my awards predictions for last season. And I predicted Tyrese Maxey to win this award. I remember that. I don't remember who you had. I don't remember who you had this year, but I do remember you picked Maxey last year. I predicted Tyrese Maxey last season. And you guys told me then. You guys told me then. Oh, yeah, Tyrese. Nah, he's already too good. Like, he might have an improvement, but he's already, like, improved enough. So I I don't think he's going to get it. And now, we're a season later, and he's going to win the award. He's my number one as well. So I guess, in a way, I'll take a delayed victory lap. I'll take it where I can get it. This was the hardest award to predict. If you guys are allowed to predict McKeel year after year, I'll take my year late victory lap. I was a year away from being correct, even if he was already a star. In our defense, McKeel... If he made somebody's list, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't. Be I wouldn't be mad at it either. Not not to take <laughs> away from the delayed victory, but just for the record, your picks gave were Jordan Poole, Cam Johnson, and Desmond Bain. Jordan fucking Poole, come on now. <laughs> 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 Another guy who was kind of already too good. Dude, I Maybe can't believe I said next year. <laughs> Cam Johnson, done. But Cam Thomas, I should have picked Cam Thomas. He 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 wouldn't he wouldn't have won the award, but. Cam Thomas didn't be proud this year. Definitely improvements, at least, at least in the uh, statistical categories, for sure. He's like plus and, 11 in points this year. And crazy like that. And being Decent able to get consistent minutes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah my, my number two was uh, same Kobe White. And then my number three was J-Dub. He's, uh was already very good last year, but literally – Looks like he's going to be a star now and not just like glue guy, really solid quality starter actually could be like something special. They have a really, really strong at the very least big three going on there with Chet, Shea, and J-Dub. And then I did, uh, I put Shingun with the frowny face because I, I genuinely think I would have put him at number one had he played five more games. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, is J-Dub, is he a 20 PPG guy now? I know he was kind of like under. He's just at under nineteen under. right now. Yeah. That's a pretty good second year jump. Yeah, I think Singun went from like fourteen points per game to like twenty one, and the Rockets just are, have been a night and day team. I even for a second, I because I took a look at it just to see just to see what the numbers were saying on Jalen Green because he's he's looked a lot better this season as well. His stats really aren't too different. Cause he's been a little bit up and down, but during that hot streak he had, yeah, he averaged oh more last God. year, didn't he? He was like I 22 so. last year. Yeah. But with that being said, opportunity, the amount of people who are taking shots in that team now, yeah, I, I do think what he's doing this season is immensely more impressive. The numbers just don't give him a very strong case. But as far as just eye test wise, he is a lot better. Yeah, last 25, 30 games, definitely a significantly improved player for sure. Exactly. There's no doubt about that. Um, I'm going to preface my list by saying that I am with you, Reek, and I am protesting a maxi selection, so he is not on my list. Um, I love I don't, it, man. I don't know if he would have won yeah. the award anyways for me. Um, for me, he's a little bit of a beneficiary of a lot more opportunity this year as well, and that's not to say he hasn't improved, but Evidently, Harden being out of town has helped those numbers look a little bit better as well. So I did take that into consideration. But nonetheless, I'm under protest. He is not on the list. Uh, honorable mention does go to your boy Cam Thomas, Gabe. Uh, just the pure statistical leap in of itself uh, has to be considered. Uh, my number three on my list is a guy who's really taking a jump over the back half of the year. Again, has benefited from not many guys taking many shots on his team. But any of the... Uh, Great back half of the year, last 50, 55 games. Defense continues to be great. Offense has taken another leap. I forget how many games it is now of the sample size it is, but it's like over 18 points a game. Uh, He's been very good. Efficiency still solid. I don't know if he stays in Washington long term, but whoever has him long term, they got themselves a hell of a secondary piece on their team to have as a two-way guy. 
he's the type of guy you want on a playoff team to make a deep run. Somebody can shoot the three, create their own shot if needed, defend really well. Uh, he's really taken that next step after kind of just being in the mix of guys in Washington over the last couple of years. And he's kind of taken that jump to be one of their core guys moving forward. Uh, number two, Jalen sucks is where I put him here. Uh, probably someone that I don't think most people, if anyone's really going to consider on this award in terms of a formal ballot, but I really like what I saw from him this year, even though the statistical jump is significant. I don't know if it's anything more than two and a half or three points a game in that department, but the three point shooting went from a non shooter to now someone you legitimately have to respect shooting near 38, 39% from three on over five attempts. Shot creation, sure, not elite. Maybe not what you quite hope for yet, but he's now a legitimate elite three and D talent in this league. And before he was a elite defensive talent whose offense you didn't really care about. Uh, that's been completely changed this year. The defense just continues to look better and better year in, year out. Great on ball guy, continues to force turnovers and just is an absolute menace at the point of attack or off ball. I love what I'm seeing from him. And the fact that he's made that game so complete now, I wanted to give him his love on this list. And then Kobe White, as you guys had at number two, thanks to the protest, he's at number one. Great leap from him. And like you said, Reek, the statistical jump is there, but decision-making significantly better, passing significantly better. He looks more now like a guy who can play the point guard spot and isn't an awkward fit. Is he a combo? Is he a sixth man for life? What is he? He's shown now that he can be that point guard on a team. He can lead an offense. He can run things. He can make better decisions. Uh, so that, on top of the statistical leap, uh, he's the clear choice for me right now with the likes of a guy like Jalen Johnson, like a Sangoon, uh, being el ineligible for the award. I love it. Um, I got those Denny stats for you. It's a shade under 19 a game, nine rebounds, three and a half assists, like 61% true shooting since February 1st, which is 26 games. So he's been he's been really good back half. Um, I love the protest because, like we said last year, Gabe, Maxie's already too good. If there was any year for him to win it, it would have been his year two after his rookie year because he took like a nine point leap down there. Like he got way better, but he's he's already too good, man. I'm sorry. Well, I I say the award is cooked, but Lowry just won it with a. Really traditional good case. Yeah. So, I mean, what kind of pisses me not off? All the way, not all the way cooked, but it's back and forth. Yeah, like it's back and forth. Like if that's the case, if Maxie's going to win it this year, fucking Shea should have won it last year. He went from like 23 to 30 points a game. He went from yeah. a non-all-star to an all-NBA first-team player. Why didn't he win it last year? You know, it's 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 all over the place with this award. They need to it's the field. They need to under control because it used to be like – Used to be like you know Monte Ellis taking a leap, you know the Gilbert Arenas leap, like guys like that. But now it's like, oh, this guy averaged twenty points a game. So and so leaves town. Oh, so and so's injured now. Oh, okay, he's up to twenty six points a game. He's gonna win the award. John Morant, number two overall pick, nineteen points a game to like twenty seven. I think Big I think Maxie's a bit. Uh, I think I think Maxie's a better choice than like what Ja was because I mean. I agree. Maxi, we we knew from from pretty early on that he had this level of talent, especially from that first playoff run. But um, I mean, I don't think that he was touted as a first option, and not that Philly's been great with Embiid out. But I mean, he's kind of held them afloat, and his efficiency is down from last year. But for what he's being asked to do, to just you know, keep them afloat with, you know, the being their top guy by a long shot. I mean, Kelly's good. I mean, Buddy was there, but I really think they're just now tapping into his potential with Embiid being back, you know, Tobias is there. So, I mean, they, they got a couple guys, but for what he's being asked to do, I do think him being able to succeed to a pretty high degree as a first option is pretty impressive. Yeah, for sure. Right. I think it's definitely he would, it's a better pick than Jaw. I'm not saying Jaw that saying up. much, but he's a better pick than Jaw. Jaw was that was such nasty, just just nasty by the voters, man. 
Should have been Des that year. Should have Desmond Bain was right there. Um, Darius Garland, I think, was right there, in my opinion. Yeah. I think Jordan Poole might have been my winner. He was there. Yeah. Poole went from like 12 to 20 points a game. It's like a bench player, basically. Like, come on, bro. Like, like what are we doing? Craziest fall off I've ever seen. That, that was your guy. That was that was your if winner. There was, if there was a least improved award, it might be Jordan Poole. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope he can bounce back. Maybe it was just a you know rough transition. He went through a lot that last year in Golden State. Like that could really take a toll on you. He did. He did. Let's hope that. Maybe it's like a a DeAndre Ayton situation. Maybe he still needs to get his housing situation situated to feel confident on the court. I'm I'm bro, over sorry. DeAndre Ayton, bro. I'm off. The you know what's crazy? The last like three weeks, he's been like killing. Against some they bad suck. teams, but he has. They suck, but yeah, the, the, but he's been killing. Ain't he nobody has. that matter playing right now. This is garbage stats. Um, me and Gabe had Jokic and Dev had Luca, but we also we hope Luca wins the award. But yeah, he had a dream. Who got the love for Drew Off Ethan and Rookie of the Year conversations? <sighs> He was in contention for my all rookie team. <laughs> yeah, but he, once he, didn't, we, he didn't make it for me, but once I learned that we're scrapping the 65 game minimum on that, or it doesn't exist for that award, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I would have loved to have him. He, he didn't make a list, but I would have loved to have him in there. I, I love put on do I breathe. Man. I might put him on before I put on Scoot. He was getting out. All right, the Scoot hate, man. It, it's, it's getting out of hand, bro. <laughs> did not make yes. my team. Did not make my I, I, team. I knew earlier when you said, um, you know, I have a name left off that might be controversial. I knew exactly what you were talking about, Scoot. 100%. Which, okay, I understand. I just don't know, like, like who are you putting over him? Do we want to get into that right now? We might as well. We might as well. I think my all NBA team is like the most, like, not controversial, but like that was the most difficult thing for me overall. So we can go ahead. We can start with all rookie. Start okay. All, rookie. all right. All right. All right. So, um, my all rookie first team, the f- top four, I think, are pretty unanimous, if not close to it. Wimby, Chet, Brandon, and then Jaime Hakez. I-, I think those four are pretty easily on there and then my, my fifth one was definitely a, a bit of a hear me out pick but i did put keontae george in that spot I'm, I'm very impressed with his production and you might look at his and scoots raw counting numbers side by side and say oh like what but given the context of it whereas like keontae george had like he didn't come in to be the guy and he was really able to show out and put himself in that position. And he is playing next to Lowry, and he's in a system. And I just – I think what he's doing is more impressive in a contextual standpoint, whereas Scoot, his raw counting numbers are similar, but, like, it's really like they brought him in, oh, Scoot, you're the future of the franchise. You just go to work. So he was just – he could be the worst player in the NBA, and he would get some raw counting numbers. But like it just was not, it was not very impressive. Especially like we said, this rookie class is deep, and there's probably some guys on second team who, you know, let's let's, not, let's all let's all give our first teams. Let's all okay, you want to do all first teams, teams first? Yeah, okay. yeah. Then, okay, because yeah, mine was mine was identical except okay. I had Vic, I had Chet, Brandon, uh, Jaime. And my fifth was Pizemski. He was my fifth guy. Okay. Okay. I like that. He, like he was that. my fifth guy. You know, it was between him and uh, Keontae. I love what you said about Keontae. I, a player that surprised the hell out of me this season is him. I didn't think he had this type of point guard game in him, but he does. And I love that for him because mm-hmm. he's he's going to be really special in this league. But he was my first guy off. I think Paz has been super high impact for a rookie on a team that really needed his production big time this season for what he brings on both sides of the floor. I'm um, just a very like plug and play type of guy, you know, kind of reminds me of like 
Christian Brown, but I think even a little better. You know, I think he has a little bit of a better, you know, touch to his game. So had to give him some love, but I don't mind the Keontae George shout at all. He he's been a pretty good rookie too. Yeah, no, I don't mind either of those shouts. Uh, my fifth guy alongside the same four of Wemby, Chet, Miller, and Hawkes is Case and Wallace. Uh, I've been known to be a big Case and Wallace guy all year. Liked him coming into the draft. Didn't like the OKC fit. Dagnos proved me wrong. Uh, very good season for him at OKC. Significantly helped by the fact he went from someone I had quite a bit of concerns about as a three-point shooter to being a very good three-point shooter this year. Defense has still been great. Uh, he's fit in seamlessly on a team that's fighting for the one seed. So, uh, Case and Wallace was, was my fifth guy in the first team. Okay. I like Everybody that. got a different different fifth? Yeah, different fifth guy. But both of you guys' fifth guys were a part of my all-rookie second team. So, I'll start off with those two there, Case and Wallace and Pazimski. You know, both of you guys kind of said what was up with them. So, I'll, I'll go to my last three. Uh, I'll put Derek Lively. I was very impressed with the way he was able to step up for Dallas. You know, we talked a lot about what Luca was doing, but, you know, as good as Luca was, there was a reason why they fell out of the playoffs the year before. And it was, it was that, that defense and especially that back line. And now we know Dallas's tear really started around trade deadline when, you know, they traded for PJ, they traded for, for Gafford, got some extra pieces in there to really back up that. But for the full season, you know, there was a lot of pressure put on Derek Lively to really excel in that position. And I, I think he did just about as well as you could have asked him to. As a year one guy saying, hey, we're trying to be a good playoff team, and we need you to be the captain of our defense, basically. So I think the way he stepped up big time in that role had to get a shout from me. Uh, Asar Thompson definitely started off probably a lot stronger than he finished. I think he hit a bit of a rookie wall, but what he was doing on the defensive end and his overall versatility, it felt like he came in and was really good at just about everything except scoring, which, you know, probably not the best thing to not be great at, but for a team who kind of has their star guy in Cade and then, you know, has Jaden Ivey next to him as another solid scoring piece, I think having a guy like that that just does a lot of the glue guy things is very valuable. And he just like some of his stat lines early in the season were crazy. And then my last guy is is definitely a vibe pick, but I I threw Gigi Jackson on there. You know, Memphis didn't have a lot to celebrate this season, but you know, Gigi Jackson was one of those guys who kind of came out of nowhere. I know I'm not too familiar with high school basketball, but I guess the story was. You know, he was really highly touted in high school and kind of fell off a bit in college and then really blossomed once he got to the NBA. But just what he's been able to do on the Grizzlies and really give them some sort of saving grace and bright spot this season with, you know, Ja missing pretty much the whole year, Jaron underperforming. Desmond has been solid, but for being their bright spot and just for being so impressive, kind of coming out of nowhere, I wanted to give him that shout I like it. Um, yeah, that that's a good shot. He, I think he's gonna be. I'm excited to see him when yeah. Ja gets back, man. He's got. He, he's a lot. A big talent. Big talent. Um, did not make my list though. Did not make my list. Um, I had to make a, a late change because I forgot Derek Lively. So <laughs> Derek Lively is he is on my team. Um, but Keontae George, Scoot Henderson. Instead of Asar, I went with a man. Their numbers are very similar. Um, but I just feel like a man's highs were a lot higher than his brother. Um, get Will soon, Asar, too. Like, that's – blood clots is just – I hate hearing that, man. Get Please get Will soon. Definitely. Um, but he was, he was really good, though, early on in the season, you know, when he was getting consistent minutes before Monty started losing his mind and stuff. But – and then my last guy um, – I went with Kaysen. Uh He's he's also on this on this team too. I was I wanted to give um, Bilal a shout out because you know he had some really good moments. Um, I, you know you mentioned Gigi Jackson. You know he's had a really good you know forty five game sample size and stuff. But Kaysen, I mean, who knows if he had more opportunity? You know how good his numbers even would have looked. I think he's at like seven points a game, but super efficient, shooting the three point shot over forty percent. 
and has been like an important player, you know, for this OKC team going into the playoffs too. So he's been great. Yeah, no, I like those shouts. Like you said, like GG also not on my list, but great 45 games from him. Cam Whitmore, another guy not on my list, but really yes. good flashes. Bilal, similarly, I know we've talked about Dua Brees, had a similarly good year. And that doesn't even include guys like Anthony Black, who's had moments, Grady Dick, who's had a good back half of the year. So a lot of guys that even still with these two teams are going to get omitted. A lot of good talent at the rookie spot this year. But my list does include Derek Lively. Brandon Pajemski, Scoot Henderson, and both of the Thompson brothers. Keontae George got left out on my list, oh. um, and I don't feel good about it, but I, I don't feel about leaving on any of these top 11 guys. Um, it, it is a tough one. But I don't know who I even would have taken out. Uh, it might have been Scooter. It might have been Asar, but um, good year from him still. Uh, I really like what I saw from him. Efficiency still needs to improve, and that was my biggest concern from him coming into the league, but He's a rookie guard. Uh, I'm not exactly signaling alarm bells yet on him by any stretch. And like you guys alluded to, he has looked better as a point guard, as a playmaker than I ever thought he was going to be coming out of college. I thought it was like, he's a two and he's going to shoot. And I don't see much playmaking props out of him. You saw clearly see all otherwise, and they've been right in that so far. So I'll give him credit for that. But uh, you guys have touched on it. Pajemski, great year in Golden State has had to have a big role for them competing immediately. Uh, and he stepped up. Amens looked great, especially in the back half of the year when he's got more run, great athlete, great defender, cutting ability as a rookie. Very good. Not really impressed by him. Uh, lots of good rookie talent this year. I was, it was really tough to select this list. Um, I wanted to show Gigi some love too. Uh, there was consideration for Cam Whitmore getting on one of these lists. Um, I could have made a third all rookie team this year. Quite yeah. easily. Deep, pretty deep class, pretty deep class. Um, wow, I, I thought I thought you would leave off Scoot. I'm not gonna lie, Dave. I, I definitely thought you'd have Keontae it's over, tough. over Scoot. It's tough. Th those are probably the two I would have swapped over if I had to make a change. Um, and like you said, Gabe, earlier, the numbers are pretty similar. Uh, there's not a ton of discrepancy there. Uh, I've seen a little bit more playmaking props from Scoot so far this year. And that's by no surprise. I mean, Scoot projected as that coming into the league where Keontae didn't project that at all until we kind of started to see those slashes in summer league. Uh, but Keontae, although not in an absurdly favorable situation in Utah, has had a little bit more help than Scoot's had. Uh, Scoot's been in a tough spot as far as help in Portland. Obviously, they've had a pretty tough year. Anthony's missed time. Sharp's missed time. DeAnthony Ayton, or DeAndre Ayton's missed time, and he hasn't exactly been a great help as a five-man for a large part of the season. So uh, not exactly great there. I mean, even Malcolm Brogdon hasn't played half the year. So uh, he's been he's been running with some five-rook lineups sometimes. Uh, and that's a tough situation for a, a rookie point guard to deal with. But even still, he's shown flashes. Uh, so that was enough for me. Do you watch, like, if you, I haven't watched the Blazers game in so long, but – I guarantee if you turn the Blazers game on, like you'll see like three guys that you've never seen before. Oh, for It'll sure. Be like, or it's like lineups like, with like Scoot, Kamara, yeah. Chris Murray, Duop Reith. Like it's just a bunch of rookies. <laughs> like it's like when they say they're starting full rookie lineups, they legitimately mean it. It's five rookie lineups. And Look. then like Thibel might get in there a little bit. And then who knows after that? Like it's, there's not very notable names on that team right now. This is a tangent, but I have a feeling. Chauncey Bubs might lose his job. And I just think that's so unfair because look at the fucking rosters that he's been dealing with. It is what this is his third season, I think. Those yeah. rosters have just been fucking terrible, man. I, I feel I feel so awful for him, man. But he's he's probably gonna lose his job because it's like year three and they still suck, but it's also like the first year of a rebuild. <sighs> yeah. That, that's just a tangent, but yeah, that's I'm odd. I'm never selling my my scoot stock. It's still there. I'm holding on to it. Every time I see the the NBA Twitter discourse where people always highlight his lowlights, but never really show love for his great basketball that he, that he has played in stretches this, or good basketball that he's played for stretches this season, I always got to highlight that because people. It just seems like it's like kind of like an agenda against him that I see on NBA Twitter. I'm like. Like, man, it, it kind of irritates me a little bit, but he's I think he's going to be fine, man. It takes I think guard is the most, especially point guard, most difficult position to adjust to in the NBA by far. 
if they move off Chauncey, I feel like they just need to already kind of have in the back of their mind somebody available who they need to get because the last thing you want, especially like you said with a young guard who they have a lot of stock in, you don't want him to be on like his third head coach by year four. Yep. Like if they're going to go in a different direction, it it needs to be somebody who they're like, okay, this person's going to be around for a while. Cause I, you know, if he's already starting out shaky, it's not going to get any better. If you're switching the whole front office, switching the whole coaching staff, switching everything, every single year. That's a great point. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, I mean, I just, I had to remind myself what was going on after the bench. Um, because obviously Aiden's back in the lineup now. Uh, Ryan Rupert was the other rookie I forgot about, but he's a zero on offense. Great defensive talent, zero on offense, so he's not helping Scoop. Um, shout out to Donald Banton. He's been quite good the last few weeks, but he wrapped your legend. He is Raptor still Celtic a legend. key guy right. there. Um, <laughs> Ashton Hagen's key guy there right now off the bench. What, col- what college he go to? Got tells me Virginia, but that's probably very wrong. Nah, he, he, he went to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and then Justin, Justin Mene is a key back at wing there right now because Matisse is injured. Moses Brown is on the roster. Like these boys do not have help right now because Matisse is injured. Justin, Brogdon's injured. Anthony's injured. <laughs> Justin Mene. <laughs> I, watch, I watch a pretty good amount of basketball. I, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Let's go let he go. Let's go let he go. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this right now, bro. As a as a Raptors fan, there's people starting on the Raptors right now. Who I don't bro, know I saw. Right. I think it was um Hoop Central posted like some dude's stats from last night. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, I, I can't. Br- I can't bring myself to watch Raptors games right now. You got Malachi Flynn off chopping fifty feet while the Raptors are, <laughs> are starting. Nobody's. Bro, it's crazy. Bro. You're starting two K Brown shirts. I'm like, yeah, yeah. We uh, we started Malik Williams tonight at center. We got Garrett Temple starting. We got Jordan Onwara playing big minutes. We got Muhammad Ugayi oh playing big minutes off the bench. Shimon Freeman Liberty is getting run now. Jalen McDaniel is just having to play again, even though he's been trash all year. Do we got a uh, Michael Porter's cousin playing minutes? No, he's he's gone. Didn't he get he's waived? Gone. I don't know if we the Raptors are so anything, bad. Yeah, I don't but know. he is. If if Silver's comments today say anything, that boy is gone. Cool. He he might he, he might not have to play. Like he'll probably play in like Brazil or something. He he won't even make it to China. You said who? Jonte like, Porter. Oh. <laughs> He's probably gonna be playing in like Brazil. He's gonna ah. go on that couple of couple of arc now. Go win a couple of MVPs in Brazil, then hop to Germany. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, I, I like that. Watching like, Toronto right now. La- last tangent about random players. When I went to that Celtics Pistons game. Detroit was starting somebody. Never heard of this guy. Like I, I told you, I watched a good amount of basketball. I had to look up like who like who was this kid? Like I did not know who he was. And then they brought somebody off the bench. I'm like, who is this guy? And then they brought in Shemezi Metz, who I'm like, I'm like, when, when did he, he get, get there? Here? <laughs> <laughs> I was so lost. For and real though. I, I was so confused, man. Like, gosh, wild times in the season. These rookies see a really bunch of random guys. Too. It really is just kids out there. That is unless your <laughs> name is Du Apri. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's like 27. So yeah, I think I think Hawkins is older than me, but I think you guys are older than him. Yeah, he can't be older than 23. No, but yeah, no. It uh, it goes to show why this was always Josh Jackson's time of year. Uh, there's some teams you can feast on. Yes, yes, yes. Like I'm yeah, I'm I mean, waiting for somebody to get too. called up the last day of the season to drop like 35 points, like. Kenny Lofton dropped like 40 last year, last game of the season. But if Boy, Malachi God. Flynn got 50, I believe in anything because Malachi Flynn was on my team for several years. And nah, he scored more points in one game than Killian Hayes had all season. <laughs> Probably scored more points in that game than he had all year with the Raptors. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Killian Hayes, man. <laughs> I'm, okay, last thing. Game. Do you know how bad you have to be to be a top ten pick, get waived, and nobody picks you up? 
Even like, Anthony bro. Bennett got you had a, like Anthony Bennett was on like three teams. I, yeah, at least yeah, I don't think league. he was in the league for four years though. <laughs> I think he was done before year four. That's true. That's true. That's true. Bennett, Bennett was is, he was pretty awful. He went to he went to Minnesota, then he ended up in Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, I think that was about it. Like he's on his Jan Vesely time, man. But he's he spent time in. Did Bennett spend time in uh in Toronto? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 time in yeah, Toronto. I mean, he, no, had, he had at least four teams. Yeah. Okay, I, he had four years. He had four years. He only played 19 and 23 games in year three and four. But I And those 19 with the Raptors were at an average okay, we of 4.4 minutes. We got to get back to the show, bro. We need to get to all defensive teams. Bro, come on, man. This is... This is tangent weekly, man. Like we always just go on random tangents, bro. Like, We're not even so. done with the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> if if you can count on anything at three point weekly, it is indeed a, a random tangent about some random player, or some team Absolutely. that is no longer relevant to the conversation. Absolutely, hey, uh, bro. I already heard Jan Vesti's name. Like, what, what is? <laughs> that's that's where Killian Hayes is heading, bro. Like he's on his Jan Vesti time in. Is this, is this year four? This would be his fourth year? Yeah. Who do you yeah. think had a better NBA career? Killian Hayes or Milos Teodosic? At least Milos was kind of decent on Why the Clippers. Milos, man. Yeah, at least he has some moments in what they were a playoff team with him mm-hmm. there, I think. They, they Killian Hayes, decent. man. People were happy when he had like a, a the first couple weeks of the season, like he was like averaging like seven assists and two turnovers or something like that, and everybody was like, oh, here's Killian. France is crazy, bro. When you got the player from France, you either get, like, legendary, like, Tony Parker, Victor Wimbanyama, Rudy Gobert, or you get, like, Frank Nielakina, Killian Hayes. There's the only, like, average player from France is, like, Nick Batum. But Nick Batum was damn good in his prime. He was. I won't even call him average. Average is, like, a role player, though. I think Evan Fournier is like average. That's an average guy. Evan Fournier yeah. was average at twenty. I feel like if Nick Batum was damn good, then you got to say like Fournier in his prime was. He was. Yeah, even Batum was a lot better than. Yeah, Fournier give me Batum every day over Fournier for sure. I mean, Batum's Batum's still, prime Batum was still, still good. Seventeen, eighteen. He was a hell of <laughs> a lot better defender than Fournier was. Celtics fans and Knicks fans, they got it out for Fournier. So. Oh God! When I, I, I he was he's he's on the Pistons by the way. When I was watching him, he was warming yeah. up. I'm like. I'm like, I want to boo this guy so bad. <laughs> like he, he's bona fide Celtics. He's bona fide Celtics. Watch. You said who's more hated? Yeah, boss. It's, it's definitely Kyrie. Oh, pro, yeah, I don't think anybody's topping Kyrie, bro. No. Which I, 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 I wish Boston fans would just let that go. I said it several times, but yeah. <laughs> that was karma for Isaiah Thomas. My God, they deserve that. Yeah, pro- huh? that's fair. That's fair. Isaiah Thomas, son's legend, by the way. I don't he even think he was signed last season. time we had a podcast. He was employed. Bro, so, so, somebody said they said he signed for the rest of the season. Somebody said also for one more week. <laughs> he signed one more ten day. <laughs> yeah, they, they suck. <laughs> they're they're pretty bad. Um, do y'all want to do all defense before we get to all NBA? Yeah, let's, let's yeah, do all let's defense. Do it. Let's do it. Um, my all defensive okay. first team was really straightforward, so I'll just go ahead and throw it out there. Rudy, Wimby, Bam, Anthony Davis, and Herb Jones. All guys that we talked about in the defensive player of the year discussions. I had a bias pick, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy, AD, Wimby, Herbie. I'll put Derek White on there. Oh my, yeah. Put Derek White on first day. <laughs> That's fair. That's, That's fair. my agenda. That's my agenda. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I was relatively similar. I had Rudy, Wemby, AD, Bam, uh, and then I went Jalen Suggs as my fifth guy. Okay, I like it. Uh, it's just like the rookie teams. Both your guys as a uh, fifth guy was on my on my second team because I, I had Derek White and Suggs on there. Put the Dorcher Chamber, Lou Dort. Put Jaden McDaniels. Timberwolves are so good, they needed two players on here. And okay. honestly, 
OKC got two players too, because I'm not playing about Chet. That's my bias pick. You was pushing like I said the deep boy discussions. Mm-hmm. Chet's my bias okay. pick. Okay. Um I got Bam, Jalen Suggs. Those were my top two guys. Yeah. Um I didn't even check this guy's games played, but I wanted to give him some love. Alex Caruso. Is that yeah, guy I didn't check his games played either, but he's on my list, so I sure hope he does. That man is straight hacking. <laughs> yeah, he's got 69. We're good. Okay, cool, cool. I All gave he him does some love. Hack, bro. That dude's, he's not making any ballot that I ever put together. Um, I agree with Gabe. I got Jaden McDaniels. I just feel like Minnesota needs two because they've been <laughs> that damn good. And McDaniels <laughs> is that guy on the perimeter for them. Um, and I went with Jared Allen, man. He he really he held it down in an important time of the season, you know when Mobley, who was all defensive first team defensive uh, player of the year finalist, he held that shit down for them defensively, man. So I, I had to give Jared Allen some love. I like the Jared Allen show. Uh, did not make my list, but was on my honorable mentions. So I like that he's had a good bounce back here this year defensively for sure, but offensively as well. He's had a nice bounce back. So I like that show. Uh, for my second team, Herb's there, of course. Uh, Drew Holiday and Derek White both get on there for me. Alex Caruso is also on my list. The fifth spot, I'm torn. I could go two ways. I'm going to go with KCP. Uh, he's my fifth guy here. I was thinking of Jaden McDaniels, but I want to give Denver a guy. I think KCP uh, deserves a shout here. I think our last episode, I think I mentioned like he has a case for all defense. So it's had a good year. I love it. He's been great. Um, I'm glad you got a, a Drew Holiday guy that gave that shout. Jalen Brown's also probably had like the best offensive season of his career. Like he's yeah. really bounced back from what he was the last couple of years. He's been great. Um, Lou Dort, like Gabe mentioned, I love that pick too. Yeah. Lou Dort doesn't get enough love. I forgot about him. I'm a Lou Dort guy. Arizona State legend. You got it. <laughs> He's a point guard there, which is crazy. Real quick, I want to say this about Jalen Suggs because all the talk about the magic is point guard this, point guard that. What if he's just going to be their Marcus Smart eventually? Like he can develop into just being that serviceable point guard, but it's more so going to be Franz and Paolo really being the initiators. And Jalen Suggs is, is showing 3 and D potential. Like maybe he's just going to be that for them. Well, that's the thing, He's especially right with his three-point shot where it is now. Like, I don't think there's an issue with him being the guy. Now, if you want to argue how he fits with Anthony Black and then those two with Paolo and Franz, okay, sure. But again, maybe Anthony Black's three-point shot develops over the next couple of years and they're fine. Uh, now, maybe they'd like to make a move, whether it's for a two, whether it's for a one. Who knows? I mean, we've seen that Suggs is able to be flexible between those two, but I don't hate that shout. I think there's an argument for that. It's different last year when he was like 32% from three, but I mean, we're only in year three and he's already got himself to be a very respectable three point shooter. So I I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially given the fact that the identity of this team is defense. I mean, they're going to have to get a little bit more shooting eventually, but part of that's just going to be the natural progression of Paolo and Franz, especially when you consider the fact Franz has had a very down year from three this year. Wendell, been out of the lineup a lot this year, and that affects their spacing as they're only big on the team who can really hit threes at a pretty high rate out on the perimeter. So uh, there's still some some tweaks there. And maybe Jet Howard becomes more of a guy over the next couple of years. Obviously, they drafted him this year for shooting and more spacing. So uh, there's still some things to tweak with. But, I mean, Suggs being their guy when they are built on defense with, with him, with Paolo being decent defensively, with Franz being good defensively, with Jonathan Isaac being as good as he is, Shout out to him. If he played more, he would have been defensive, all, all defensive team guy. Like that's their identity. So I don't hate that. It's just a random thought. When you, when you brought him up for most improved player, like that idea popped into my head. But that smart comparison is honestly a good one. You think about Marcus Smart. Really, the biggest detractor about him was just when he was trying to do too much. Like sometimes, like you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are the best players on the team. They should probably have the ball. All of a sudden. Marcus thinks he's Steph Curry and he's just popping three eight seconds into the shot clock. So, I yeah. mean, if you said Jalen Suggs is a similar archetype, and even if he becomes a little bit less skilled, but just really fits into that role and kind of knows to defer to those top two guys, I mean, it could work out really well. It already is working out really well. I'm in position for the two seed this season. 
right there, right there. Um, well, I guess we're we're tall NBA. It's time. Okay. Um, I don't love my second and third teams, but first team, first team was pretty pretty easy, pretty straightforward. First team was easy. We might as well get it out of the way. Is this the same as last year? If I'm not mistaken. Mm, no, MB made no. it last year. MB made it last year, and I don't know what I don't remember the official ballot, but I'm pretty sure Gabe had a Donovan Mitchell shout. That's true. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah, there's. I probably did not put Shea on my first team last year. I'll say that. Okay. Okay, I got Shea, Luca, Tatum, Giannis, Jokic. And everybody was shocked. The only <laughs> spot I kind of like for a second thought about was Tatum's, but I'm like, no, they've won right. 62 games. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I can't. But he's making Jalen Brunson was right there for me, like had a good case for me, to be honest. Yeah, that's fair. Brunson's he was the name. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Tatum was the name that if anyone was going to slip, it was going to be him. But like you say, it's Boston's been too good, and no one's close enough to really bump him off that spot. Okay. Okay. So that's the that's, that was the easiest part. Yeah. Now, 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 now it gets spicy. Like if we if any of us had the same second and third teams, I would be like really kind of I would be shocked to be honest. Yeah, not not <laughs> expected for sure. It's crazy because really nobody on my second team is guys that I'm like that known to be to be like a fanboy of. But all, all of my like guys I'm a fanboy of are all on my third team. So it makes I, me I, happy because I, I, like, I feel like we got the I same guy. Anti-bias. I feel like we got the same guy on one of the last spots on the second team. Then my uh, my second team, Jalen Brunson, like I said, is the first name. Yep. I got Kawhi. The Clippers have been insane, and I've got, it's Kawhi. He's, I mean, he's been I'm making these lists for like ten plus years at this point. I got Anthony Edwards. You know, like we said with Tatum locking in that first team spot with them being the Boston being so good. You know, Ant being the primary option on you know a first seed campaign. I wanted to give him that nod and put him on this level. Uh, Anthony Davis been the best player on the Lakers. I mean, what he does on both sides of the floor, I think that he's deserving this season. And then my last spot, probably the hottest take on second team, was Kevin Durant. I think he's been really impressive, just how rounded his game has been as well. And, you know, the Suns haven't been amazing per se, but um, what, I mean, what him and obviously Booker have been doing this year to just – Really put that team on their back. Super impressive basketball from him this season as well. Okay, P- pretty pretty similar. Um, okay, Brunson was the top guy. Uh, I, I still put it in a format of like because my teams ended up being kind of like this, like guard and then front court players because that's kind of how my teams ended up being. So Brunson, Anthony Edwards, I feel like Minnesota. Definitely has to have one All NBA guy, and if it is at least one, it's Ant. He's been great. Um, I have Kevin Durant. Kawhi did not make my second team. I have Kevin Durant. I think the numbers are impeccable, and I feel like their struggles. It's really not on KD. Like he's been there pretty much all year. He's been great all year. I think having one of his best seasons. Like he's been just tremendous this season. And them being up and down, it's no no fault to him at all. Like, he's been the one guy that's been steadily available, him and, like, Grayson Allen. So I had to have KD there. Um, Anthony Davis is also on my second team. Um, there was a Laker that was going to be on second team. It's AD for me. I still think he's been their best player, even though LeBron's numbers are great too. But Anthony Davis was talking about his defensive impact earlier, but even offensively, had a really good year, basically 25 and 12 this season. Like he's been rebounding, like, you know, his old self, um, scoring the ball a lot more. Like he's been phenomenal. And this is probably my hottest take of all, but I don't care, man. DeMontis Sabonis is on my second team. I like it. He's on my second team, man. Like his 
kind of sets are ridiculous. Man, the basketball that he's been playing since like around like late January, early February, phenomenal, phenomenal. Like he's become the best player in that team during the regular season. Like he has really, honestly, really kept them like still, you know, in the mix of being a, you know, a top end playing team, you know, because De'Aaron's kind of like been up and down, you know, second half of the season. Malik Monk being out, Kevin Herter injured and never figured it out. Keegan Murray up and down. He's been the one constant. That double double streak is is insane that he's had. Um, man, he's been great this season. I had to give him a second team nod. That might be a hot take, but I had to give I had to give one of those super hot takes, and that that's the guy for me. No, I like that a lot. Did not make my own NBA teams. He didn't make not it at all. It. No. Wow. Well, that, that's a harder take. <laughs> what? That is that is interesting. That is interesting. We'll, that's, we'll that's round back that's... to that more when we hear who uh, who got the knowledge. That's Andre Drummond stats, bro. That's fake stats. Yeah, you you ain't watching. I'll, I'll just say that you ain't you ain't been watching. <laughs> Uh, Sabonis did not make my second team, but he was the next guy that I was considering if I was making a change. Um, I definitely don't hate him on second team. Um, funnily enough, after we said that it's very unlikely, my second team is exactly what Gabe had. Uh, Brunson, AD, and Kawhi, and KD. Um, KD was the last guy. Uh, if I was making a change for DeMontis, it was going to be with KD. But I like the take from you guys to both have him here. Like you said, Reek. Really good, well-rounded season for him. Defense has been a bit better. Playmaking's been a bit better. Scoring's still been good, as KD does. A really solid year for him. I uh, also just like the fact that Kawhi and KD are actually eligible for this. Uh, not something we probably considered we were going to be seeing with that 65-game rule coming in. But Kawhi gets to be here. KD gets to be here. AD gets to be here. So makes it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more interesting considering what we thought we might have been dealing with. Okay, I like it. I like it. Yeah, that, that's a fact though, because man, I I think Kawhi more so than KD is like the real shocker. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. But yeah. love that for them for both being available. Um, that's definitely big. Also, like Paul George has been available too. He's another guy yeah. that's only be a consideration. Anthony that yeah, Anthony Davis has basically AD. he's been really super LeBron in LA. LeBron since he yeah. got to LA is really like 50 to 60 games a year. So I mean really out of all the guys who I think we were like, oh, yeah, they never were playing games. The only one was really Embiid, and he pushed it. He should have been sitting Ky- out games. Kyrie, so I think so Kyrie, I think Kyrie yeah. might have been all NBA for me if he uh, met those 65 games. Very, yeah. But, yeah, they're definitely all, Only so. two is not bad, considering what we've been seeing from some of these guys the last few years. I mean, it was part jokes, but, like, Legitimately, also not fully joking when people were saying Mikhail Bridges is going to be making a lot of All NBA teams. Yeah. Given part of that is that he didn't quite make the leap that a lot of people thought, but part of it's that these guys have been a lot more available, which is nice to see. That's thanks. Yeah, Gabe not having Sabonis is like I'm so unmoved by Sabonis, bro. There's just some I'm... players who just like I just can't. That's just I can't stink. bring myself. I, I understand that it's a regular stink, season man. award. I understand this a regular season award, but there's just some players who like, bro. You like, I, bro. I can't, I can't until I, can, I see some. Look, I can understand me I having see him on second team. Matters, he's me just having so him on limited. second team. Me having him on second team is high, but not having him at all when he's been the one like constant thing the last sixty games for that team. I'm just like, not moved by him at all. I just think he's such a – like, his, he's a good floor raiser, but I just think you're so limited with him as one of your top players that he can I, put up the stats, but, like, this that's, team that's is fine. going if, nowhere if we were doing all If we are doing all playoff team, he probably wouldn't sniff it. But it's a regular – one, it's a regular season award for it one is. thing. It and the is. body of work that he's put up is fucking insane. Like, you cannot deny that. Unfortunately, you can't you, you can't deny that 2013 and nine assists a game. You can't deny that. And so it's I'm, I'm like taking, in their winning games too. <laughs> in their I'm winning games five. too. I'm taking Them sliding is not really due to him. It's due to injuries and you know De'Aaron kind of sliding a little bit the second half of the season. It's not due to Sabonis. He's been only getting better as the seasons went on. 
Yeah. Them boys don't have Sabonis playing as well as he is right now. They're probably the team that's in the threat of losing that playing spot to Houston. Yes. Absolutely. That's, right. that's unfortunately the reality of the situation of how the rest of the team is played, and he's keeping them afloat. Because especially with those nine assists this year, like last year you could argue it's like, okay, he's dribble handoff to Herder, dribble handoff to this, dribble handoff to that. Their guys ain't been shooting good this year, comparatively. Real deal hub. He's a real hub. It, it's a now. it's a true I can create, I can be a very good passer, not dish here, dish there. It's like, nah, I'm I'm gonna be the hub for this offense, especially the way De'Aaron's been this year. Like, still a good year, still putting up really good scoring numbers, but he ain't been the same. Efficiency's down, not dribble penetration, not the same, falling a little bit too in love with the three at times, inconsistent, like Simonis is definitely that constant. And there's games where our six man of the year, Malik Monk, he might score 25 one game, and then the next game he might score two points on like 15, one of 15 shooting. But I'm every hating. night, so DeMont Simonis is putting up production every single night. You can 50, give me all the logic. Whatever straight double doubles every single night. I'm just curious to see because when I was making my own NBA team, I was I was at work yesterday. I was really stressed, and I'm like, I'm talking to my guy PJ, I'm like, man, there's like 10 names. I, I got like 10 names written down for five spots on 13. And by the time I got to my last spot, I had like still, you know, several names left. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know who I'm picking. My last spot still has question marks by it. Because I didn't figure out until like halfway through the stream who I'm going to put at, thir- at, at the last spot. So I'm really interested to see. Who you have over DeMontis Sabonis? And not only you, who you have, you probably I'm have hating. two names. You probably I'm have two names him, over him that probably shouldn't make it. I'm hating. That's that's gross, man. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm hating. hating. It's, it's a nasty it's agenda. Man. It's a nasty agenda. I'm a hater. That's gross. Unfortunately, unfortunately it's not a prediction. It's my ballot. That's, that's, that's I'm, fair. I'm hating. That's fair. That's fair, but you're, you're – your reasoning for leaving him off is quite b- poor. It's poor reasoning. You could do better than that if you were going to leave him off. I'd rather you build up the guys that you put ahead of him then without without mentioning the word playoff at all. That's all I'm going to say. Let's hear it, okay. Gabe. Who we got on the third team? The third team? All right. And this is a no. This is a no particular order among the five guys. Uh, but first name, Tyrese Halliburton. You knew it was coming. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Get the fuck this, out of this here. This has got to be a vibes list. <laughs> this man Halliburton. This man Halliburton. Look, he got he did get injured, but my God, he's been fucking awful the last two months or so. He's I, been terrible. I I understand. Since the injury, God awful. Since the injury, things have not been spectacular. But you cannot deny that the only oh, I the main deny. reason why the Pacers were as good as they were this season is because of Tyrese Halliburton. And listen, you can talk about recency bias all you want, but the first half of the season did happen. I'm gonna be so I'm gonna be so honest with you. I'm gonna be so honest with you. The what 10, 10, 11 names I wrote down, I did not write Tyrus Halliburton's name down. (laughs) I'm I'm glazing. You're not on my six game short uh, honorable mention list either. So I'm I'm glazing. I'm glazing. Gay brother. All right. Number two, Steph Curry. The, The Warriors. The Warriors have been a bit rough, but even in the face of that, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Steph is still Steph. Okay. Super Number down three. year, but okay. <laughs> I got LeBron. Lakers. That's your best not, pick yet. Not amazing. Not amazing. But LeBron is still putting up amazing stats. And – for a team that's had a lot of players underperform this season, you know, we really like their offseason. We like their depth. It still ended up being LeBron and AD carrying a lot of the load. They did that to, I mean, the, the only reason they're seated where they are is because the West is so deep. But they've been a, they've been a winning basketball team this year. Really is just that two-headed monster. Okay. This is this 
this is a winning pick. This is not his best statistical season. I'm giving Zion the All NBA spot. Okay. I think the Zion has been so incredible, running that offense through Zion. You know, experimenting with the point Zion shit. Him just being able to get himself to the point where he's still able to be that dominant force. You know, we've seen flashes of just the crazy athletic plays he can make. And while he might not be pushing it to the 27 points per game we've seen before, the fact that he's able to do it at a level of consistency, and like I was saying when I was shouting out Willie Green earlier, the fact that Zion has been able to do what he's done all season and keep the Pelicans at pretty much above the play-in tournament for about the whole season in this Western Conference, I think that's very impressive. And so his just overall body of work this season and for him to finally put it together, I'm, I'm really high on Zion as a player. And then my last one, I, I had to see if he, he qualified for the 65 games because it is definitely close. And as of right now, he's played exactly 65 games. It's Devin Booker. And I don't know if you guys have him on or not. You might not. But, you know, you guys talked about KD, but Devin Booker's been a huge part of this too. He was asked to do a lot more this season in the fact that, you know, they really didn't have a real point guard. And even if you want to consider, like, Bradley Beal a bit of a combo guard, I mean, he didn't really play for half the season anyways. So Devin Booker was pretty much their – I mean, 1A, 1B score with Durant, and he was charged with being their primary playmaker. And I think he really did well in that role for what he was asked to do. I've been on record to say that I think he's the best shooting guard in the league. Now, did Donovan have a better season this year? Maybe. But overall, like the body of work that he just continues to put up, and like I said with Kevin Durant, that team depth-wise is not great. And Bradley Beal's missed a lot of time. So I think that Durant has been a bit more impressive, but Booker is right there with him as far as making the Suns what they are. I'm going to be honest with you. Except maybe LeBron. Sabonis had better seasons than all those guys, in my opinion. Yep. He definitely did. But it's your list. Well, who who's the who's the last guy? Who who's the last guy on your list, Gabe? That that you like they they barely just made the list. Who was the last guy for you? Objectively Halliburton. Because he's he's slowed down. Yeah, that's look, Sabonis had a much better, much better season than Halliburton. What, what what's your reason for putting Tyrese over over DeMontis? I'm hating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at least, at least you admit that. At least you admit that. At least you admit that. I'll admit that there's no logic to the pick. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm hating. Okay, yeah, my third team's pretty much different from yours. Um, you didn't say Maxi, did you? No, I put Maxi. I put Maxi on my list. Um, okay. This is my winning pick, Jalen Brown. I think Boston needs two guys. And even though Jalen Brown's it's not as good numbers wise as all NBA season last year, um, been one of his more efficient seasons over the last few years. I mentioned defensively, he's taken a leap. I think, you know, his playmaking has taken a leap. Um, and really, like, especially like this second half of the season, he's played some of his best basketball of, this, of his career. So the numbers don't really back it up, but he's definitely been all NBA caliber, in my opinion. Um and then you guys mentioned Kawhi earlier. I have Kawhi on my third team. I have LeBron on my third team. And then this last spot, I had so many damn names that I just I had to whittle it down. There's cases for a lot of guys. Um, I agree with Gabe, though. I, I got Steph. I got Steph. And I don't love it. I really don't. Um, there's some guys I want to give some love. There's some guys I wanted to give some love to. Um, but Steph's season, even though it's a down year for his standards, it's still a pretty good year. And for all the turmoil they've been through, they're still sitting at like 44 wins right now, which any other year they'll probably be like comfortably in the top eight with 44 wins. But the West is just so crazy this year. But all the turmoil that's been going on, he's one of the few constants that even when it's been a couple of down stretches for him, his highs have been so good too. So 
it's hard to leave Steph off. You know, I thought about Booker, but the Suns stink too much for me to put give them two guys. You know, for even though I gave the Lakers two guys, I don't know. The Suns just ah, they they irritate me. They're just their lows are just pitiful. Um, I made the tweet. You you could really make a case if you wanted to put Wimby on the third team. I'm gonna be honest. You could really make yep. a case for that. Be so honest. I also wanted to give this is probably unpopular, but Rudy, I wanted to give him some love. Yep, um, I think he has a case week. for third team. Um, just because how good that defense has been, they're pretty much the one seed. Like, he definitely deserves some love. There were some more names on my list too, but yeah, that last spot was tough for me. But yeah, that, that that's my five. I don't love my third team, but yeah, it's kind you of definitely don't love my third team. team. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, no, no Sabonis is insane. Tyrese Halliburton over Sabonis is even crazier. If you would have had Maxi, I could maybe understand. If you would have had, uh, may, maybe if you, even if you had Rudy, I'll be like, all right. You respect fine. Zion, bro. You need to respect Zion right now. Zion is fine as an omission. That, that's fine. yeah. I I love his second and I, half and I say that as Zion being on my list, but that, that's a fine omission. Yeah, I love his second half of the season though. If he if he was playing like. 85% of what he's done the second half of the season, he would easily be all NBA. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah, so Zion is, of course, on my third team. Uh, Sabonis, of course, had to be here. Uh, LeBron is here. LeBron and Sabonis were the only two I felt good about. After that, the next three were lumped in with the other 10 that I was looking at, uh, and it was pretty much a toss-up from there. Uh, Steph did get a nod in. Uh, like you said, Reek, down year, but it's still a good enough year. Um, a down year for Curry is still a pretty darn good season. Uh, he was good enough for me to make the cut. And games played was the issue in terms of I'm not giving him higher consideration for my next guy, but he's been too good otherwise to keep him off. I did give Booker the last spot. Uh, scoring production has been too good. Has had to have a higher playmaking role this year. He's up to seven assists this year. He's taken on that role relatively well, considering Brad has missed a lot of time. And quite frankly, he just hasn't been that good either. Uh, so Booker's filled up a bit of that void. But uh, Jalen Brown was one of my first names off. Terrius Maxey was one of my first names off. Uh, and Paul George was another name I heavily considered uh, that didn't make the list. He, he was on my list of 10 guys, you know, trying to get those last couple spots too. Paul George had a really good – he had like a little down spurt, but overall pretty good year for him. I feel better about my list now after Devin's – Besides you my shouldn't. raw, besides you my shouldn't. raw hate, but we had like the same guys. Besides me Bro, raw hating on one person. Look, I like Halliburton. I, I do, but it's one guy. Though. He's not. It's he's not guy. sniffing. He's not sniffing all yeah. NBA. He wouldn't be on a fourth team. He might not so, even be on okay. a fifth team. So if I if I take out Halley and I put the other Tyrese Maxi, how are you feeling about my team then? Like I said, I would understand more if it was Maxi, if it was really anybody but Halliburton, honestly. I guess, all right, man. I'll stop blazing, man. I'll, I'll, no, nah, man, stand, I'll, stand I'll, on I'll, it. Stand on business, man. You you got it. Halliburton, all NBA third team guy. It's the GOAT. He's lucky Trey Young missing, missed, missed a lot of games because Trey Young was playing a lot better than he was. Yeah. Then send Trey Young out of Atlanta, man, so he can actually contribute to some. Shit, that you could, I would take. I might consider Jimmy Butler over uh, Tyrese Halliburton. <laughs> if the Heat get a player, <laughs> if the Heat got a player, I, I think. I, I think Jimmy actually meets the. I think he meets the requirements. I think. I think I was looking at him earlier today. He was at fifty-eight. I think. Ah, damn. Let me confirm, but yeah, he's maybe I was shocked. His tonight. okay, I had Bam. I, on, I had Bam on my honorable mentions, but yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy's a bit short. Actually, I think I think Kenny was talking about it on his pod the other day about like who the Heat's best player was, and there was something about like Jimmy Butler's on-off numbers that are like ridiculous compared to Bam or something like that. They probably are. I wish he averaged like twenty-one this season. I thought he was at like eighteen or something like that. Yeah, he's he's been decent. Three point shooting's actually been apparent throughout the season too. He hasn't just decided to not shoot the three all year, which is nice. He's at forty percent this year. I will never like understand that change in his game. Like what what happened? Everybody that goes to Philly, like they just forget how to shoot. I blame Philly. 
That that's who I blame. What what are they teaching? What are they doing? Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a career high three point shooting percentage for him this year. Highest since the 2012 2013 season. Jeez. Took him over a decade, but he got it back. Yeah. Rudy had some serious consideration for me. I I, I really yeah. wanted to give him the nod. I think Minnesota, if they get the one seed, they definitely deserve two. Um, yeah, I wouldn't hate that at all. He was my fourth honorable mention. But it's t- it's tough for me to leave Steph off. That it, like like we said, like down year, like his efficiency's down, his assist numbers are down. But he's had kind of more of a scoring load, or a, you know, he's he's had a bigger plate. He has to eat off of this year. That's yeah. him as garbage. Yeah, I'm, I, I was can... I'm kind of shocked that they've won 44 games. Like they're over 500 because they've been bad. Bro. Yeah, yeah, they've had some rough stretches, but. They got the experience to rough out a few wins, I guess. Young guys helped him out, I was saying that. But, yeah, Kaminga's been good. Jemski's been good. Trace Jackson Davis has been very good. Moses Moody, when he's actually played, has looked good. Yep. It's everybody except for the vets other outside of Steph. Yeah. I mean, it's hard for me to say Draymond's been bad. Draymond's been fine when he's yeah. been on the court. Wiggins has been better the last like month month and a half but it's still not what you'd like to see from him but clay still stinks better clay still stinks yeah he has a game every now and then it's like i can still do it for one game to send hey, that man on a, I need to send that man on a vacation after every game for a week and say, okay, you play one week a game for us. <laughs> Other than that, you are not to, you are not to enter Jeez. the facility. Oh, bro. You are a if detriment they didn't love to our him, team outside of that game. If they didn't love him, like he might not play. Like he should he probably he probably shouldn't play too many minutes, to be honest, because he's just not good anymore. No. You, you literally just need to give him like three or four minutes in the first quarter second. Okay, you feeling it tonight? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Go out that. Go back out there. You not? Nah. Okay. Moses, come on up here. You're in that's today. How he, that's how Miami was trained Duncan Robinson for such a long time. Exactly. Like yeah. two seasons. Yeah. Another most improved player, Duncan Robinson. Yes. Yeah. Got that was better. my next name up. Yeah. Random bag. Up. Random bag. He's been cooking this year. Like he has. Has he spent? Like he's been doing some crazy shit this year. Shout out to him. Hero has one stinker in the playoffs, and they're going to be calling for his, his head, and they're going to want Duncan back in there. It, it might it might be a fact. They just might be a like better team without Tyler Hero. I'm yeah. so honest. They just might be better without him. Yeah, I think he's a good they player, really but, you know, he got hurt in the playoffs last year. They make it all the way to, to the NBA Finals. He was cooking before did, he got hurt. Did he come back in that playoff, like in the finals, or did he try to come back, but they just shut him down? I think, I think he might have played down. game four. Maybe he did play a bit. Yeah, I don't just, remember I don't now. I think Hero's good, too, but he, it's like he's what they need. But I feel like, I don't know, they just play so much better without him on yeah. the floor. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I did play one game. Game four. Maybe I might be talking out my ass, but I might. I'm I think he was probably going to come back if they pushed it to more games, but yeah, yeah, he uh, put up a, a big twelve yeah, points in game four. But that's about it. But uh, that heat yeah, dark magic is already starting. Man, Terry Rozier's been picking it up. Hey, with high spin, been shooting the three point shot good. Yeah, you know, Jimmy locking in. Bam's been shooting threes. It's that black magic, man. It's starting. Be interesting to see though, because assuming it's Philly that stays down there, if they got to go through Joel and then they got to go through Trey Young, it's, it's a hell of a gauntlet to go through. I was arguing with Garrett earlier, man. Like he's like, you know, he's saying Kobe White's never lost a nine ten game. I'm like, Trey Young's never lost a playing game. <laughs> Trey will get you a game. One thing about him, he gonna get you a game for show. Yeah. He's gotten them two before. He's got them two. Yes. He has. Now, if Miami got to face Indiana, I might like them in there in that, in that matchup Bro. a little bit more. 
selfishly, I was like praying that Miami beat Indiana the other night. Just because the the idea of getting the one seed, winning 65 games, basically, and then it's like you either have to play Embiid or the Heat, that's just that's, that's just brutal. rude. Like, that's not that's fair. <laughs> like that is no, tough. No disrespect to the Magic and the Pacers, but I'd much rather see them in the first round. Much rather see them in the first round. Less experience. There's a lot more holes on either team. One's great defensively and one's great offensively, but they suck at the other. Like, give me and, Indiana. Yeah. Give me, I think Indiana is, I think they're the worst team in the field, for in sure. my opinion, just because yeah. that defense is so putrid. Tyrese has been not good. Yeah. I mean, it's let's face game. it, they've not been good the last month or so. I mean, defense yeah, is marginally better, but still not good. And no Matherin and the departure of Buddy Heald, that offense is just not cooking the same. And part of that's Halliburton, but part of that is he don't have two great offensive players spacing for him anymore. So it's like Siakam's good, but it's a very different dynamic than Matherin and Heald being out there. Yeah, Lee Smith's their best. I mean, he's been shooting the hell out of the ball this season, but he's their best shooter now. Like best shooter, yeah, in it's every way. Change. Spotting up volume percent, like he's their best guy. It's a big change, big change. Orlando's also an interesting one because their offense is so bad. But the fact that they might play first round, that's gross. Let me be honest, that's nasty. I might watch a game in that series. I'm be honest, I might watch a game. <laughs> that's gross. Yeah, right now they'd be playing the Cavs, which would be a crazy defensive series, which sounds like my type of ball, but sounds like terrible rating for the leagues. So, Magic Cavs, yeah, that'd be yeah. I'd be all over that, but the casual would definitely not be. God, man, Cleveland, the the Don rumors are starting to catch a little life again. Ah, tough, tough second half of the season for those guys, man. Yeah, it is. Those guys have they haven't been able to get the right side of the injury bug either, which is unfortunate because otherwise like, they've still had some some good things going. I mean, Don was great until he got injured and was in and out of the lineup. Like Evan Mobley still been solid and three point shots actually been pretty good in the last couple months, which has been nice to see. Like we mentioned Jared Allen earlier, he's been great. Uh, Karis Levert, guy we didn't mention in sixth man of the year, but probably in that next year, guys. Dean Wade's kind of come to life the last couple of months. Like Sam Merrill's been good. Yep. Some pieces there for sure, but haven't been able to get the break. As a core's mission the ball. Like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going right except for the that the last piece you said. That's a crazy take. A hundred push ups says the Bulls will not be in the playoffs meals. <laughs> No, nah, there's no shot. But if DeMar gets them to the playoffs, deserves clutch player of the year. Don't care if that's not how it should attribute to the award, but <laughs> it's two years old. Change the rules. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I think I was watching I was watching numbers on the board. They're like, do you guys ever think this award's ever gonna be serious? Like Gabe mentioned earlier, he has to take it serious. I don't yeah. think it ever will. Yeah, it's it's such a I don't know, it's a it's a weird award to to adjudicate and and give something to maybe people in like 20 or 30 years as they grow up and watch the sport and they don't know the history to it they'll just consider it another reward maybe it'll gain relevancy but i think it's going to take a while if it does cooper flag has three off it or clutch player of the year awards <laughs> lebron has zero <laughs> he's the most clutch player of all time so he has to be the goat <laughs> god that's exactly how it's going to be yeah, maybe, maybe they should have just done like offensive player of the year or something like that, comeback player of the year or something right. like that. It's going to be so nasty when they're like talking about, oh, players like Kyrie Irving have zero clutch player of the year awards, or <laughs> players like Joe <laughs> Johnson <laughs> play zero clutch. Like, bro, get out of here. That's going to be nasty. Um, Hall of Famers got announced recently, I think. They did. Chauncey and who was the and other one? Um, yes, yes. Both both very well deserved. Yeah, the goalpost for uh basketball hall of fame is a little different, but shout out to Chauncey. Shout out to nice Chauncey. To get in. I got asked the other day, it's funny Gabe just brought up Joe Johnson, but do you guys think Joe Johnson's a hall he's gonna make the Hall of Fame? No, 
I think he'll eventually get in. Everybody gets into the basketball. Hall Seven time All Star, one time All NBA. That's yeah. really it on his resume. I think he's all Seven, rookie team. Seven time All Star and a nice highlight package. That's enough to get you into the basketball Hall of Fame. Any other sport? No. But in basketball, yeah, he'll get it. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't think he does, man. I don't. If somebody like Antoine Jameson's not in there, I don't know if Joe Johnson makes it, man. Yeah, yeah. Joe, I don't even know if Joe Pepper's a Hall of Famer. Or maybe C Webb just made it. Re- I don't know, but who would you, who would you put in first, Joe Johnson or D Rose? I'd probably put in D Rose. Matter of fact, would you that put MVP in Rondo? Holds a lot of weight. Would you put in Rondo over those guys? I don't think Rondo gets in. No, really? I don't think I'd put Ron. I definitely wouldn't put Rondo over Rose. After the reason why Rondo I'll give it to Joe Johnson, the MVP for Rose that holds like a ton of weight. I'm just be honest that that holds too much weight. I think Rondo's the nastiest like agenda is when people try to people try to hate on Dwight Howard's Hall of Fame case. Like, bro, you're just stop. I'm gonna be honest. Dwight might be first ballot in my opinion, man. His peak he might be. Dead. Dwight he Howard is a first ballot Hall of Famer. He was the best center in the NBA for like a decade. His peak was just that good. And it's not like his peak was like it was like six seasons of like being the guy at that position. He, at he least literally was years. the number one player on a finals team. Yeah. Yeah, no, he definitely should be. He definitely should be. And uh Three, yeah, just for the record, C C Webb made it in 2021. Okay. It took him a while though, man. C Webb, I think like had a Hall of Fame career for real. Definitely did. Multiple time All Star, All NBA player. Yeah. Yeah. Tough era of power forwards, too. Very tough era. Made the Kings relevant. Yeah. Great college basketball player, too. I don't know if that holds any weight in the Naismith Hall of Fame. But. You guys think if Luka Doncic oh, retired tomorrow, he goes to the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. Max is going to win an MVP in a couple of weeks, so yes. He's about to be, I think, five-time All-NBA first team. Yeah. That's insane, bro. It's crazy. crazy. I don't think he's, he's never made a second or third team, right? He's just only all first team. He all went from first. rookie of the year to All-NBA first team. Yeah, and it, the it, way he says he wants to go out and not play forever, he might never get off that first team. He, he might be there forever, which is LeBron crazy. Was first team for a long time that could but, be possible, but yeah, yeah, he's already he's about to be at his fifth. Yeah, just crazy already. Unless he has a no, year, not knock on wood, sunshine, knock on wood that he just doesn't meet the sixty-five game mark. Which he's had, I think he had a, a year, a couple years ago, he didn't play 65. So, yeah, I think so. He's kind of always been flirting around the number. This year's his most available year, I think, since his rookie season. But, uh, yeah, he had 61 in year two. He's been 66, 65, 66, and then 69 this year since then. So, he's very much been flirting with that number his entire career. A couple of those seasons were shortened, though, so I guess we'll give him a little sly, a sly on that. I was going to say, 61 in 2020 is really good. 66 in 2021 is amazing. That was 72 games. He only missed six games that year. Okay. Yeah, if, if, he's, held, if he's available, he might get it. He, he will get a decade straight of all NBA first teams. That's That's crazy. I think Braun had a good stretch that started in, I think, 07, 08, or maybe 08, yeah, 09. That sounds right. And then 2018 was his last season as a first team guy before a third team, and then he was back on first. Yeah. Yeah. But he's been all NBA every year since his rookie year. Rookie year, his only year he was an all NBA, which is. It's kind of nuts. It's crazy. And he was still top 10 in MVP voting. <laughs> That's wild. It's crazy. That's wild. Yeah, that is crazy. We talk about Wimby coming in and being crazy, but Luca really might be right there with him. 
Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, Luca just, he's not the athletic freak, so he's not going to get that same type of notoriety. But I mean, he's going to be right there statistically. He's just not going to have deep poise to be an added layer, obviously. But yeah, you're going to be up there challenging him for MVP for a damn long time. That's for sure. Besides like height, I feel like Luca's the kind of player who you can like just envision anybody really being. Just because, yeah, he's not the fastest, don't jump the highest. Like, just. He's just that, I don't know. It's just insane. Play. It's that mind, man. It's that mind. He's one of the smartest basketball players ever. 100%. It's like, it's like a Curry. Like, every, like, Curry, like, you look at him and you're like, oh, like, the average person with enough practice and skill, I mean, you're not going to shoot like Steph, but that's top point one percent guy, man. Like nah. versus versus <laughs> like versus like LeBron, I mean, nobody's getting that athleticism. Wimby, nobody's nobody has that frame. There, but there are some really good guys. Like I, I've been saying this for like a couple of years now. Jalen Brunson's a guy that yeah. you're young, young Hooper. Somebody yeah. you should be looking at. Jalen Brunson is one of those guys. Um, I think Darius Garland is another guy that's all-star caliber guy that has a game that you can kind of replicate. Like, yeah, some people just aren't – they're not blessed with the, you know, six, 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 seven frames, can jump out the gym. You know, even Luka, like, you know, like you said, he's not athletically gifted, but I think that mind that he has, that's not something that you can really teach. And he's also still six, seven – Strong as hell. His change of pace is second to none. Like some of those things you just can't even teach, man. Chris is, Paul. It's tough. Some of that's just gotta be an aid, and some of that comes yeah. from playing professional basketball while you're still a young teenager. <laughs> yep. That's just years on years on years of having that experience. You can come into the league at 19 and you're not starting to make those reads. You're like, yeah, I've been doing this for like five years. It's fine. <laughs> It's just, it's just absurd stuff that just separates them because no one else has been on that level. Absolutely. Like, I, I was talking to my dad, like, last week or something like that, and I said to him, I'm like, I think Luca is just one of the best basketball players I've ever seen. He was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, no, not, like, accomplished, <laughs> but just when it comes to just, just, just playing the game, like, he's one of the best players I've ever seen. Can't guard. There's no way that you can guard Luka Doncic. Can't guard him. He can get 30 points on anybody. He's one of the best passers I think this game has seen. The mind, like I said, the, the IQ is just second to none. I think it's. It might not be like LeBron's here, but it's it's right there. I think it's right there. Yeah, and he's still like arguably not in his prime. So like, he might get there. Like it's it's crazy. He's one of the guys with like really rare off nights, kind of like with. The big thing with Jokic, like, is it's it's not often you see Luca has like a stinker. Very rare. Yeah, Jokic and if he is does, also... he probably has like twelve dimes and ten boards, yeah. and he's probably still got to the free throw line like eight or ten times. So, Jokic is the same too. Like, it's very rare Jokic has a game where, even if it's one of his worst, you can look at it and be like, he still wasn't like the best player on the floor. Or I said that about Giannis forever. Like I felt like there was a like, I mean I don't know if you can say the same so much now, but there was definitely a long time where I felt like Giannis like never was having bad games. I remember there was one game. This was the 2020 season, the bubble year. Um, it was that stretch where the Lakers like they beat the Bucks and then they beat the Clippers right before the league shut down, mm-hmm. and it was that Laker game. He, in my opinion, he had a bad game, but he still had like, like thirty points and like twelve rebounds, and like five assists. Like it was still like statistically, it looked great. Shot over fifty percent, like looked great. Yeah. His game not being predicated on jump shots, I think, makes it a lot easier. And Jok- Jokic is sort of the same in that regard. Obviously, Jokic can stretch the floor a lot more than Giannis, but Jokic can have great impactful games without really even needing to take that many jumpers. There's games where Jokic takes five field goals and he still has a great game. He's insane. So, when you when you got to name in um the the list with three MVP winners, and you started off with like three centers, I thought you was gonna say like 
Like this is where Jokic is going to end up on the all-time center list after the seat after he wins his third MVP. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was kind of. That's a that's a different discussion for a company. different day. I'm gonna be honest. You you know I'm not really like an all time rankings guy, but it, it, it's a part of basketball discourse too. If he wins MVP and then he wins Finals MVP again, and obviously they win a championship, you can say you can say some some crazy things that might not be that crazy anymore. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I still. I would. I would be hard for me to put him over like. Hakeem, Kareem, Shaq. I think people would start putting them in some conversations over Shaq. I don't know. I'm not saying I'd agree with it, but I think yeah. that's where some people would put him. I don't think he'd be in Hakeem Kareem category yet. I mean, if you, I think, but those four, those four thinking. guys, those four guys you just named. Outside of that, I think people might be saying like he might be better than this guy, this guy, yeah. this guy. Do he, he could be he could be a top five center after this season. Like, like people could start saying that. I'm that, that's for sure. What I'm gonna say people since his prime that. was forty years ago, I'm, I can't really directly compare because I mean I wasn't there. But I feel like accolades wise, he's probably closest to like the Moses Malone right now. Yeah, Moses. I don't know where people consensusly rank him, but he's pretty accomplished. Yeah, that seems fair. Moses is a three time MVP. Scored a lot of points. Did a, he won championships, or at least one championship, 83. Respect to the OGs, man, like Will and Bill. I, I It's kind of tough to have those discussions because that was 60 years ago. Their, their peaks was a long time ago. It's kind of hard to have those discussions with, like, you know, trying to put Jokic above those guys. It, it's, it's difficult. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of difficult. But if people want to like say Shaq, bro, like, Shaq can't space the floor for nothing, but that was just where when he played, like you that wasn't necessary. Yeah, it was the part of the game. Facts. Facts. Like you see bigs today, like they just naturally have to adjust somehow. Mm-hmm. Or even if they still don't space the floor, like schematics and stuff will make it to where it's not really that much of an issue. Yeah, I mean, none of the top bigs are not having some amount of perimeter game. I mean, even a guy like Giannis, obviously, is not a great three-point shooter, but he's still out there handling the ball, getting downhill, making cuts from the perimeter. Like, that's just the way it is. Embiid, projected to be a great post scorer. Now I'm handling on the perimeter, shooting threes off the catch, off the dribble. Like, obviously, Jokic is great at it, even Sabonis. Like, not a great three-point shooter, but he'll still shoot them and has actually hit them pretty well this year. Got a mid-range game. Can be a Bam. central hub. Bam, same thing. Guy like Draymond, not a three point shooter, but I can operate. I can really operate the two man game when I get on a four on three in the backside. I can operate really well from the top of the paint or from the three point line. Like so many guys like that now, even if it's not a three point shot, they just know how to operate in so many different ways. That's not, I'm in the paint. It's elbow, top of the key, three point line. Yeah. They, they can just operate in so many different ways now. For all those top guys, they don't really exist. If you don't have that type of ability now, you're just, you're not at that tier. Yeah, I think really at all time bigs, the one who probably translates the best to the modern game is Sakim. And even that's not perfect. But to me, like, disregard errors, disregard everything. I think just like the not greatest, because accomplishments are a whole different thing. And some centers have crazy accomplishments, but just the yeah. straight up raw best center of all time, I think, is Sakim. I so agree. I, I, think, I think he would just translate anywhere. Yeah. But. I think he would. I think Shaq would too. Even though like his game is like extinct today, I still think he would pretty. Well, Giannis carries it up. Yeah, Giannis Shaq's is just a lot more versatile, being quicker. But I mean, but if you take like Orlando Shaq. That yeah, Shaq field, like that yeah, yeah. Even I think like he was given a bit more freedom. Like so. Yeah, because he could still like face up. Obviously, he wasn't shooting it, but he could still face up and like you know bully past people. In like the mid post and stuff like that, like especially young Shaq, like he was bringing the ball up the court and shit like that. Yeah, you got people saying that Shaq in twenty twenty four would be Zach Eady. Nah, nah, Sha- Shaq was. I think Shaq would still be really good. I think this is maybe a, a guy that we're not thinking about. David Robinson would be really good today. He'd be very good. He was super skilled at seven one, both sides yeah. of the floor. What do you think, think about Yao? What you think Yao would translate? 
I think he'd be he fine be offensively. Defensively, yeah. yeah, I think he'd really struggle in, on the defensive end from a rotation standpoint, especially in pick and roll in the two-man game. I think he'd struggle a lot there, but... Yeah, could he could shoot it from mid from the midi. So yeah, like offense, I think he would be able to like eventually stretch out to the three, like after so many years of playing in the league. Yeah, but I mean, be I'm not saying like he's gonna be like KD from three, but like you know how you know guys like Brooke knock down shots. You know, these guys can space, right? They're threats. But I don't think he could run the drop covers like Brooke does or other guys do. He's just he's seven six, man, and he's a Heavy, he's not like a Wimby seven five, seven six. He's like thin or three hundred pounds, seven six. He's a big dude. That's tough. That, that's really it's real tough. Like he, it'd be interesting. It would be interesting, but ah, that's tough. That's real tough. That's a good question, Gabe. Yeah, he he might be Zach Eady, but maybe better <laughs> offensively. Yeah, yeah, probably. Or is that BD? Men's college yeah, basketball. Yeah, I was real skilled. Yeah, I was super skilled offensively, but he was. I don't, I don't know when it win with Yao as their center. I'll say that. Yeah, I don't know how much it would develop, but I'd be really interested to see in line with more of a mid range and potential development of a three point shot. If you started getting him involved in the short role and how he could play make with his size, I mean, not that he'd need to be a great passer, but like, you're that big, as long as you're a decent passer, there could be some really interesting action you could run off of that. We've seen worse guys than Yao in the short row. For decent. sure. Like Jared sure. Allen's good in the short row now. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. That would be fun. That would be fun. I think Ewing, Ewing was pretty skilled offensively. Yeah. Ewing would have been very good. Good mid range guy. Yeah, I think he would be good. A lot of those nineties guys are Yeah. Yeah. Like I think like Zoe would probably just because of his rim deterrence, he would probably fit in. Hey, I've already he seen modern day might Charles be able to Barkley. operate in the drop. You said Charles? Modern Charles Barkley already exists and her name is Angel Reese. You heard it here first. It's She's been getting like boards Zoe. like crazy, bro. The rebounding is egregious. She's she's a good player. Great rebounder. She she is a great rebounder. I'll give her that for sure. Bro, did y'all see? Th this is proof. Caitlin Clark is the ultimate needle mover for college, for women's basketball. The Fever, 36 of their 40 games are on national TV. Televised. And one was last year. That's nuts. Crazy, That's man. Nuts. Crazy. A lot of pressure on her. No I hope she's good. I love her game. I hope she's good. But she she's she could be the 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 player that can transcend the women's game because you know it took a while for the NBA really to become prominent. They're going right? maybe into she the could 80s, be, I think. Yeah, like maybe she could be the magic, and maybe you know there, there's a lot there's already a lot of talented women in the WNBA, anyways. But maybe she could be like that player that you know now there's more eyes on the league, so more people can see. Oh. It's actually good basketball. There's actually a lot of really good players in this league, and that can help them out, you know, because they're still kind of in their infant stage for us, like 27 years of WNBA basketball. So that's not a lot. So no, hopefully this can be not. a player that really pushes the needle forward even more. Yeah, that I mean, be, be really nice to women's see. college troops is way, way better than the state of men's college troops right now. I'll say that. I, you I see what the numbers that. is like. I could not care less about men's college hoops. And that's just – I think this, a lot of that's a testament to, one, women staying in college for more years, and, two, just the amount of alternate routes to the NBA now between – I mean, I know Ignite's about to shut down, I'm pretty sure, but just, like, guys coming from overseas and everything, all the alternate pathways. Yeah. The transfer portal also in the men's is way more, like, big time than the women's. Another yeah. thing that I kind of noticed, especially like tournament style, the first like weekend I was more invested in the men's because the upsets happen more often on that side of the you know March Madness. But then when it got to like Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight, 
And then the final four, I didn't watch a second of the men's final four, but I watched I watched every game of the women's final four because that was high quality basketball. I watched most of the Elite Eight games, most of the Sweet 16 games. Because those were like there wasn't a lot of upsets, so those were all like really the best teams, the best yeah. players playing against each other. So the brand of basketball was just like elite. And it, though, all the games I watched were just elite games too. They got stars. I mean, you got like really the only team who I don't know many of the players on is probably like South Carolina, but I know they're like have been the top team for a while. But outside of that, I mean, you got Caitlin on Iowa, you got Paige on UConn, you got. Angel and Haley on LSU at the very least, like names, Zach, names, names. You know, I couldn't. I literally, the only reason I know who Zach Eady is because I went to a Big Ten school. <laughs> Otherwise, dude, I could not name you five men's college basketball players. I could, but. The but fact like that we're having to debate <laughs> saying that we can, and it's an issue. It's an yeah. issue for sure. Yeah, it's the yeah, men's college basketball is not the same. I'm glad women's is getting better. And because when we were younger, like it was always just like like UConn was dominating. Yeah, it's all it was year. was UConn, I feel. Like every year. Like they won like 90 straight games at one point. Like they were just dominating. Yeah, and I definitely like Baylor, used to Baylor got in there for a little bit. Notre Dame was pretty good. Stanford might have got a couple. But then, like, mid-2010s, like, that's when everything shifted. South Carolina became really good. UConn's still good, but they kind of fell back. And now you got teams like – like, that Iowa team, not that good outside of Caitlin Clark. No. But you got them pushing, you know, to back-to-back national championship games. You know, South Carolina being dominant. You know, LSU, you know, being a really good team. And that's, that's what I love, man. A lot of parity in that sport, but – you know, the na- I think the names, like, becoming synonymous with the women's side is, like, really important. And that's a, that's a step in the right direction. All the Twitter, you know, um, banter, that's a good step in the right direction in this day and age, too. Yeah. That people are actually watching and they're caring enough to, you know, make tweets, make jokes, make memes, whatever. Like, that's good. Hating that's is good. good. If you're yeah. hating on the players versus hating on the sport, if you're just hating on the sport as a whole – not good if you're like Nasty. if you're clowning like Haley Van Lith at the transfer portal and you're like my next chaptering it. I mean, that's, that's good man. Fair enough, enough to follow it. it. Yep. <laughs> real talk, man. So I I hope that this is like their real like transcendent stage. Like Gabe said, this might be their 1980s. You no, know, for like like it was for the NBA. Definitely good signs. Definitely good signs. It's, I mean, it's really this year we'll see, right? I mean, if the if the media attention carries, and there's still people, rightfully or not, clowning Angel Reese and wanting to care about what she's got going on, and that translates hopefully to the basketball court, and Clark continues to get attention. It's like, and it just needs a snowball, right? And like you said earlier, Reek, there's so much more talent in the league. Once you get Serena. at least a couple of eyeballs that the media cares about enough, it'll just get rolling from there. I mean, they, yeah, they, there's definitely a couple. Like, I, th- I think that year after year, like, Sabrina, Kelsey Plum, like, Candace Park, like, they, there's names. There's already names. Asia Wilson, and Brianna Stewart's still good. Yeah. Hey, Stewart was hating on Caitlin, man. I'm, if I get into the W, I might have to become a, a Stewart hater. That's my team, man. Come on now. Brianna, I didn't see. She said, "I saw uh, Tarasi said." Uh, she said a lot. She, she was saying a lot. I heard Tarasi. I heard Tarasi's a hater in general. She is. I, I love DT though, but she she definitely is a hater. I respect it though because she got game. I'm a I'm a Sue Bird stand over Tarasi. I'm afraid. Oh yeah, Sue Bird's like her. Candace Parker like my t- favorite women's players ever. My favorite now is Sabrina's my favorite. In the W, and once Caitlin gets there, she will also be my favorite. Candace is still playing though, so so she's up there for me too. Wait till Paige gets there, man. I'm surprised she's going back to school. That kind of shocked me. I was not expecting that. But. Yeah, I mean, I bet the NIL deals are with the ratings they've been doing. Yeah, yeah. She's making money, and that's the biggest. She, did, she missed the season like, too, so I guess the, I understand. She That's the, probably year. the biggest women's blue blood 
So I mean, she, the the nil money, bro. Their pool is probably it's crazy. Yeah, that's facts. If she's, I mean, definitely the most notable name returning. Her Juju Watkins. Yeah. Time okay. for the, the next Juju shot took her allegations, bro. I love it. <laughs> I love it, man. So like, she's scoring thirty points on thirty shots. Like that's hey, you, that's you know, I'm a I'm a Cam Thomas guy. So you're a Cam Thomas guy, but you also bring up efficiency when comparing Tyrese Halliburton and Trey Young. No aura. It's all about the aura. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I don't know. I, I love I love a good shot chucker. You know, not just chucking just cause, but chucking with intent, like. I'm a bucket yeah. getter, but I'm gonna put up these 30 shots no matter what. I love that. I mean, when you're on teams that you need to do it, like there's sometimes that just makes sense. I mean, we were talking about it earlier with the Shante. I mean, we we're talking about that Iowa team, like that bench put up a goose egg in that final. Like, <laughs> it, like there's a reason that that was like it was needed. Like, we don't want to see what out, it would have looked like yeah. if the shots were not being checked. <laughs> People were pointing out that Caitlin took 30 shots and she was like 12 or 30 or something like that. I'm like, I wish she would have shot more. I wish she would have put up 37 shots. <laughs> Dude, I think somebody was like, I it might not have been her, but it, there was some discourse where like people were calling like a nine for 20 from three stat line trash. I'm like, hold on. Nine for 20 I, is great. I'm like, I was about to say, do you know how to do math? Nine for 20? <laughs> <laughs> but that's 45% from three. That is great. Steph Curry shoot 23s and make nine of them. That's a great night. For real. <laughs> Shit, if you make seven, a lot of you make seven out of 20. That's damn near still a good night. Yeah, that's a lovely average if you make seven. Yeah. 35% on 20. Exactly. 10. That's facts, man. That's facts. Wolf's Nuggets in a back and forth with less than six minutes left. Who takes the West? Number damn, there's still games team. on? Yeah, it's like, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning for some reason. It's literally 16 minutes past midnight. I see that now. Yeah. <laughs> Devin's over here chilling at like 10 o'clock. Yeah, I got that <laughs> nice little quarter after 10. It is lovely. You was oh, just yeah, on the West Coast. Nine right I will now. never get over how different West Coast time is from the East Coast. Like that three-hour shift is like, wow, it's weird. I've never been west of Chicago, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, this past season was my first time ever being west of the of the Midwest. I'm Midwest, like I've been east to different continents. I ain't even Midwest, two states. Continents yeah. is better. Yeah, it's always weird whenever I uh, go back to where my family is, back in uh, Newfoundland, way out on the east coast in Canada. It's a three and a half hour difference. Don't know why they need the extra half an hour, but they got it. And that's that's just from here. So it's four and a half from from BC and, and the West Coast. But that's gross. Is, My yeah, family in England nasty. is like I think England's like six and a half hours ahead. Six and a half, yeah, that makes Something sense. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, that time, man. That time is different. Y'all got anything crazy that's been going on in life or looking forward to or anything? Driving the new car, man. Life is good. <laughs> For sure. That's what we'd like to see. Yeah, nothing too crazy. We uh we got some some new students starting up as uh some interns in a few weeks, so I'll get back out in the field on the road again. But other than that, nothing too crazy. Got a Got a project in the work for you two purposes, but that's uh, that's that's probably a few months away yet. It's it's a project okay. to say the least. So okay, that's, uh, but it's in the works. It's in the works. Love to see it. Love to hear it. Yeah. Wait, did you get the extension? So we uh, we're gonna find out either by the end of this week or sometime next week. They said middle of April. That's when we'll find out. So. so Okay, all right. I'll, I'll keep I'll keep going for him. I'll keep going for him. All 
right. Hopefully, I'll have good news to share. Hopefully, by the end of this week, that that's what I'm hoping. But we'll see. We'll see. If you get the extension, that next time you're in Springfield, here's but a 45 minute drive to come give a cheers. Cheers! I, I owe you a drink too, man. You done graduated. You bought a new car. Leave you cheers. If Devin come to stateside, if Devin stateside now, man. Yeah, like, Devin stateside. <laughs> stateside didn't come see the boys. That's crazy. <laughs> Man, it was probably further away I where I was. Than what, was what, what was going on? In, what was going on in Cali, Dad? Cali is where my girl's at. I had to go. Uh, to go yeah. play visit. Vibes, <laughs> vibes. <laughs> to go oh, pay a visit. Buddy was in Cali on Demon Time. That's crazy. <laughs> Bro's insane. That's oh, vibes. That's a good trip. She paid the visit while it was like minus twenty here, so I had to pay return. the visit. You can't, God, yeah, you can't sugar mama. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you know what the cost of living is in Cali, bro? Oh, no, I man. I was saying that for when she came to visit. I ain't saying that I, she paid for the me to visit. No, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was just saying she was willing to bear minus twenty degrees out here, which is outrageous. <laughs> Minus 20 is rude. I don't think it's gotten that cold up here. Yeah, and that was like we had a, a ex- exceptionally warm like December and January. It did not cross minus 20 often, but and then we had like a week of minus 30 and then got dumped with a foot of snow. But I wear t-shirts. Only, to work, man. <laughs> I still ain't wearing t-shirts different. to work. Although it's been quite nicer, it's been like 15 Celsius. So. It's been like that is. Let, me, here. let me see what that is real quick. That is a nice here. little 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So oh, that's which is pretty nice for here this time of year. So everybody. it's been great for runs. I just throw on my my t-shirt and a nice pair of track pants and we're off and it's perfect. But that's valid. I wish I could run outdoors. I'm just not that dedicated to cardio. But I have not skipped cardio one time that I've lifted. Every Man, week, social media post is, is a treadmill. With I got I got to show off the treadmill, off. man. Like I'm dead. I'm dedicated, man. I'm down. Like last time I checked, which was like two weeks ago, I was down like seven pounds. Okay. Like, this is good. I, so I switched the diet up, diet up a little bit. I eat a little less, but it's clean. Lost like seven pounds. I'm like, all right. I'm I'm eating clean, man. I've been I'm I'm trying to go alcohol free all April. I'm a, I'm a third through right now. Oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna last all April. You know, I got, I got a weekend plan. You know, go to visit a couple of homies. You know, so we're gonna have a good time. But outside of that, pretty pretty clean, pretty clean, pretty clean. I want I want to get back to hooping, man. Cause my body's been feeling a little better, but I I still don't know if I'm ready to get back to hooping. More consistently, mm, I gotta, I gotta get ready to whoop Devin some ones. <laughs> That's I'm what I was training. thinking about this week too. To be fair, now that all the snow's gone, I gotta hit the the outdoor courts again. Now that they're actually usable, Devin don't know about I, the jumper. I do gotta get the training because I, I told Garrett that me and Jamil would win his two on two tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I do gotta get ready for when that comes back around. Uh, if he's having a 2v2 tournament, matter of fact, I get PTO now. I'll use PTO to go come out. <laughs> I'll be there. Honestly, I think I think any combination of us two or us three in the twos would win that tournament. And that, that's how I not, not right now because I'm, I'm not in basketball today, but I ain't pick up a basketball in months. Who's but scoring on me- Devin, man? Nobody. Give me a few months. Give me a few months to get back in basketball shape, get the shot going again. I, I, I think I think three point weekly could run that tournament. I wish get yeah, I wish Gary was in here because Devin's NBA be conference. We'll just have to remind him next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next week is packed. Play playing starts into next week. Man, yeah, we're going on. We're on like Garrett's on what Sunday? Yeah, it is a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. Weeks going by fast. 
And before we know, we'll be I watching forget. playoff basketball at this rate. Did he say what the topic was that we were talking about? Or Sunday? Uh, pretty sure playing predictions. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then we're doing full playoff. Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah. Well, I'll tell you in the Eastern Conference, I don't think the nine or ten seeds getting out. <laughs> hey, try try to get your game. We're two in, in the West. You guys, the Hawks play the Celtics. I'm not going to see them boys again. <laughs> out West, what is it? It's Phoenix, Sac, Lakers, Warriors, right Warriors, now. Yeah, Sac is falling order. out, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they might get jumped yet. Yeah. Like when you got that broad playing the big over there. I mean, God. The Kings still play the Pels and the Suns. And then they also play the Trailblazers. The Lakers play the Grizzlies and also the Pels. Um, so the Pelicans have a, a pretty big uh, importance in deciding things. You could also still get uh, leapfrogged by the Suns themselves. So. The Zion, Suns scoring four man. points in the first ten minutes of a quarter, man. They ain't jumping nobody. <laughs> I, I ain't saying it's likely. I'm just saying statistically, <laughs> it is possible. It's if hot. you ignore the fact they play the Clippers, the Kings, and the Timberwolves all on the road, <laughs> so ain't looking good. Wow, such a good. It was a nasty schedule. I, yeah, I just hope. I just hope the nine ten is the Lakers and uh, Warriors because I don't think either. I don't think both of those teams deserve a shot to get in. <laughs> That's how I feel. They really don't. <laughs> they really don't. Uh, man. It's been the best Twitter beef all season, though. Like, the competition for the nine seed, every single time one of them jump, it's just. <laughs> They've really both been down there, like, all, all season. season. Like, there was no. Well, they're not even was, bad like, teams. Like after the in season tournament. Out. They've been down there all year because the Lakers were like third in the West after the in-season tournament. But yeah. God, those teams, man. At least I feel like the Lakers have looked better than the Warriors. Though. I just think the Warriors stink. And big changes need to be made to maximize Steph's remaining years. Just my opinion, though. His name is Steve Kerr. They just gave him an extension, though. Ah, well, looks like uh, Curry. Hey, come back to where it all started, man. Come back to Toronto. <laughs> to me, where it all started. Some action, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> They'll play in Toronto, man. Curry, he, he's got history in the city. Alex Sor, you are a Raptor. That's the he only wants guy to that's play, be a Raptor. Curry wants to play with the... With the future of this league, future NBA All Star, real NBA All Star, Scotty Barnes. Scotty was an All Star. Wow, I forgot about that. That feels like a long time ago. Respect the go, bro. I I love Scotty. I gave him a lot of praise this season. I made a YouTube video about him. But the Raptors lineup since he went out, fuck. Hey, Emmanuel quickly is putting up fucking numbers. He, he he has been balling. Uh, I would agree <laughs> with that. He has indeed been hooping since he's been back the last five games. A meaningless game quickly is like one of the best players I've ever seen. He's put up 30 point triple doubles a couple seasons ago with the Knicks. Very it's like meaningless minutes to bonus. Very These transformative. are all meaningful games. What are you talking about? <laughs> Gary Trent's been loving it too. He's like, oh, I get to take 20 shots a game again. Count me in. <laughs> Gabe really thinks like we're gonna like get on his side with the Sabonis thing. You're bogus as hell <laughs> for leaving him off your all NBA list. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. I hope he I hope he gets voted second team though. <laughs> Shaq and MVP been announced it. Bro, Tory Craig is my winner, bro. After I seen that shit last <laughs> night, bro, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Andre DeRobin's the winner. <laughs> Nah, Man's so be honest. for a rebound. He needs to force the miss. Like, bro. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I understand Drummond's beef because why the, f- why is Tory Craig throwing a oop to himself? Like, he's never yeah. done that in the NBA game. What are you doing? You're <laughs> down Craig's nine. Like, hmm, You're is this my last year. Let me get my oop. <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro. 
I blame I, I blame Tory, man. Like, come on, bro. what are you doing, man? <laughs> what are you doing, nah, Drummond? That Drummond. was his instinct. Tory, Drummond you've never done that in the NBA game. Like, what are you doing, brother? Drummond just loves an offensive rebound, man. He can't help it. Runner up is when Rudy airballed that lay that layup or dunk, whatever he did. That that's my honorable mention. Why do you airball a dunk? <laughs> Pretty sure that was in a game too. Where I was like, hmm, Gobert's playing pretty well offensively tonight. And then he, threw <laughs> he had a good game, like, bro. He, he had a good game. Just airball, airball yeah. a point blank shot. Yeah. He's trying to make his dunk content, bro. <laughs> At least Drummond's been in a dunk contest before. Yeah. Facts. Oh my God. <laughs> he was 2016. I'm, Came in I third or fourth was. place. You can't make it any worse than the current edition of the dunk contest. It's true. It's true. Not saying you'd make it better, but it wouldn't be worse. Mac won it again. Had to be Mac, yeah. There's no way anyone else won it. I'd be okay if they just like just put Mac in it by himself and just let him (laughs) just dunk. I'd be fine if they did that. Yeah, I ain't against that either. Airball. Oh, that feels like so. That was when they were struggling. Yeah, that was pretty bad. That was yeah, pretty bad. a minute ago. <laughs> I forgot that. Oh, that, was really long ago. Knees, bro. <laughs> that was the peak of them being trash after the Harden trade, too. The sideboard ran out of power. Was it? <laughs> you know how pissed you got to make Kawhi to make him show emotion. <laughs> Checking it. I saw some other like I saw numbers on the board did it. I think Bill Simmons' podcast did it. They just made up awards. I couldn't <laughs> the least any, improved so. player award, bro. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it's Jordan that. Poole. Jordan Poole. <laughs> <laughs> I've Unanimously, seen, uh, NBA in depth doing it too, though. Yeah, that's a cool. Who's thing. the, who's so the best? Who's the best Probably quality starter? Who's the best player who's not a star? Best player that's not a star. Here, here's a better question. Yeah. I've been seeing this. I've been I've seen this in a couple like TikTok videos and podcasts. Who's the worst NBA player that could take a 16 seed and right. win a national that's championship? Oof. The first guy that came to mind for me was like Malik Monk. Yeah, I just thought of Norm Powell, so that's fair. Yeah. It has to be like a six man type guy. Yeah, you gotta be able to get buckets like crazy. So yeah. To win the chip. A big could probably do it, but like I don't know who the worst big is that could do that. Oh, yeah, did you put I mean, you, you put Wendy on that the college team really and just... it's over? You see yeah, exactly those guys did, worse bro? than that, that can do that. You said who gave? Like, bro, if, if Zach Eady can get to a championship game, like bro, Wimby would fry the shit. Out of I mean, but Wimby's a top twenty player, man. Like, I'm thinking like, like Yusuf Nurkic, or somebody like that. No, but I, there might even be worse guys than Nurk for real. I don't know if my bias can allow me to say Nurk can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Nurk's a he's a hub offensively. He can post up. Really good rebounder. Yeah, but see, the problem is he's the hub. He can't be a hub for a 16 seed. He's going to be passing the guys who can't shoot. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing, bro. Like, that's going to probably is, shoot a little bit. But, is, Nurkic, you know. is Nurkic better than like Brandon Miller right now? No. And Brandon Miller yeah, was in college a year ago, and they did not sniff a championship. They made this Brandon Miller is a lot better than he was a year ago, though. That's true. He also Even though, didn't shoot mid ranges at all in college, mainly because he wasn't allowed to and is a very good mid range shooter. So, yeah. Like, could someone like Dante DiVincenzo do it? The way he's been playing. The way he's been playing. I mean, and he he was the most outstanding player, too, on a championship yeah. team. Is he worse than Malik Monk, though? As an overall player, I don't know if I'd say so, but as an offensive player, you could argue it. Okay. But his defense is better. 
I mean, DeAndre Hunter led a team to a championship when he was actually in college. So. Oh, he was like <laughs> the fourth best player in that team. Man. <laughs> Great in leading the 16 seed past more than two rounds. There's no shot. I don't even know if he's getting them past two rounds. There's no way. <laughs> Unless that really... like one to two rounds is the one good playoff game he has every year, that's it. Like that's, that's it. That's all he's good for. Maybe six of those. <laughs> yeah, there's just some the players who's going like bro, Jordan Clarkson in a in a in March. Like he he's frying everybody. I think yeah. he's too good. He, he's too good. Because I I watch I watched Carson Edwards fry people in March Madness. But he didn't win. He did not win. He lost to DeAndre Hunter. I'm trying to think of somebody that's like bad, but not bad, but like you know, like a. <laughs> How far is Dwight Powell taking a team in in March Madness? <laughs> they get smoked by thirty by yeah. one seed. <laughs> that is not helping. Yeah, if you're a big, you have to be like a. I think the worst big that can make some noise is like Nurk, a Nurkic type dude. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. And maybe DeAndre Ayton if he's locked in. If if he has his his um bed situated, gotta be in a warm climate. It might not get worse than, than Malik Monk. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. facts. <laughs> What's John Collins doing on the college team? Nothing. He, he don't got nothing. I... I don't want to say you don't got no. He he would be. I don't know. Are we getting like 2019 John Collins? <laughs> Take him in his prime, sure. They might they might be able to win a game. 16 seed. I don't know, man. He's too much of like a a hybrid four. Like he's not like a big, but he's not a wing. He's just a real four, and I, I don't know. I'll give you best players on college teams don't really move me. Dylan like Brooks, what is what is Dylan Brooks doing on a 16 seed? I feel like but Dylan Brooks. Shots, will go I'll tell you that much. I don't think they win at all. I don't think they do either. I don't think they win at all. I think they can make some noise though because he's a he's an alpha type of guy, but not 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 a good enough playmaker. Even when he was in college, he wasn't really a good playmaker. So. I honestly might consider Lou Dort higher for that than Dylan Brooks. Potentially. Not by much, but a little bit. Lou Dort got some point guard. I think Terry Rozier on a 16 seed, they could win it. Yeah. To be honest. I think he's. I, I thought he was too good to even consider. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to just think of somebody worse than Malik Monk that is like, they could really. Do Nas Reed. It. He's a bit. He's a big. Show. He can post. He can shoot. Good playmaker for the for front court guy. Would Harrison Barnes win it all? No. <sighs> Hell no. Not not good enough of a playmaker. He would score. He would score some buckets though for sure. He he would get his. Thinking about a guy like Grayson Allen too, but I was gonna say current make, Grayson Allen chops either. But hear me out, Duncan Robinson on a 16 seed with his new bag. Nah, D- you remember Doug not Eater? D- Doug Eater was going crazy just a couple years ago. Bro, he was not even that good in the tournament. He had one good game. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> He's just a good Tyus, Tyus Jones. He'd be close. I don't know what he's He'd doing this season, but I don't regular. think his I don't think his shot creation would be there, but he'd be decent. Peyton Pritchard. Yeah, I don't know what all that. I'm so serious right now. Would Clay Thompson take a 16 C to a championship today? Right now? Fuck no. Yeah. No, not if he okay. got hot for the first game, they'd win around and then they'd be screwed <laughs> from college three point line, though. Zubas on the 16 seed, they would lose to the one seed. <laughs> Lester Quinones might bring him all the way. I don't know. Oh 
<laughs> Jerome Robinson. <laughs> Rose is looking at the Warriors roster. <laughs> Let's throw Malachi oh, yeah. out at that point. Come on now. <laughs> How far does the killing ha- Hayes lead? <laughs> I think. Let's go. Oh, no. How far does it? it? Come on now. A- a- Let's Tobias put Killian Hayes on a form of three seed. <laughs> How far does Tobias it? Harris led 16 seed, I think, is a toss up. Tobias has been trashed the last two months, but I still think he's too good. That makes yeah, sense. Probably. I think Bo- I think Bojan would probably make it to not not Nick's Bojan, but yeah, Pistons but Bojan for sure. Bojan I, I think I think Kelly Uber Alec Burks low key might be a sneaky guy. Alec, Alec Burks, Burks makes me, me, show. yeah, that makes me think of Tim Hardaway Jr. might go crazy. Yeah, he, he definitely would. Yeah, he might definitely, be too good, though. Not a bad show. He averages 15 in the league. Might be too good. But yeah, like an Alex Burke show. Just give me former Knicks, Alex Burks, not current. <laughs> yeah. Current Warriors, rough. Alex Burks. Yeah. I was going to say TJ McConnell. I just don't think he's a good enough scorer. He could, he would probably still score. Uh, Decent amount of points, though, but yeah, he's been a variety of shot creation. But yeah, Cam Thomas is winning that shit easily. He's too good, though. He's a 22 point score in the NBA. (laughs) You know how many people are not putting Cam Thomas top 100 in the league? It's on them. Would I put him top 100? Top. I honestly don't know. I don't know. That's a lot of I guys. That's a lot either. of guys. I'll put, put him like top 30. Top Grant 30. Williams in college is actually <laughs> fucking. <laughs> top 30. Bro. That's crazy. crazy. How far, bro? I look at Here we go, Grant. I don't agree. Grant, Grant in college was really good, too. I don't know. That's interesting. I think, I think Trey Murphy's taking a team far. He's too he good. Could make some noise. He could definitely make some noise. Like maybe a Dyson Daniels. Like maybe that's a nah. Probably not. Nah, Dyson ain't good enough. good enough. He's a he is a great complimentary piece. Jordan Hawkins. He already won it. Do I brief? Hey, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I'm not opposed to that. Delano <laughs> Banton. <laughs> Current Delano <laughs> Banton. Hell yeah, and it's a hooping big guard. Can play make. He's shooting Just it better. How to shoot the three? Apparently, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Almost one. Great in transition. What is it with the Blazers and people going there and just randomly shooting good? Like Matisse Thybulle could not shoot. Goes to the Blazers, can shoot now. Yeah. Delano Benton. I think Josh Hart might be the only guy that went there and couldn't shoot. Yeah. Isaiah Joe's intro. That's a good one. That that's a good one. That is a good show. That's an interesting one. Cole oh, Anthony John. these days, I think we go pretty crazy. He didn't even make March Madness the first time. <laughs> Fuck it, Gary Harris, modern day Gary Harris. Yeah, I don't hate that. See when he can stay healthy the whole tournament. Got a shot. <laughs> Casey Austin Reed. I can't believe we haven't talked yeah, about Austin Reed. Casey P too. I think Austin, Austin Reeves can make some noise. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, he definitely can. Slashing guard can shoot, playmaker. Yep. Cam Reddish is going crazy, bro. All right, you lost me there. <laughs> <laughs> He's worse Michael now than he was like the first prime time. Luke Mamute or something. Like, come on now. <laughs> Nate Robinson, prime Nate Robinson. <laughs> Current Harry Giles. DJ Augustine. <laughs> Giles, bro. Oh, Niang, no. Niang's no. actually better than I expected this here. year, but Niang's beef is crazy. Fuck Niang. No, I'm just fine, but. <laughs> Monte Morris. The Q. Yeah. Just saying, man. Dude, what's Nico Miritic doing these days? I think he would win that shit. He's st- he's an overseas. He's like an overseas legend. I think he's won like three year old league MVPs or something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's just vibing. 
Is Christian Brown making noise? He won a national championship. He wasn't the best player, but he won a national championship. Colin Sexton. We're probably yeah. we'll probably go crazy. I, yeah, I still probably. think he's too good though. Yeah, probably. You had a nice year. Matter of fact, where does Freddie Gillespie play basketball right now? I'm just curious. <laughs> Freddie Gillespie. I should know that. I've seen that name recently. Is he a, no, uh, he's a nugget, right? Am I, am I oh, yeah, he's a nugget. Yes. Yeah, he's a nugget. I yeah. see Colin Gillespie on the nuggets. Oh, on maybe. Not right. But Miritich was so good. He was. He was nice. He'd probably still be good right now. Freddie Gillespie plays for... I can't pronounce that shit. Corvinus Vizveta. <laughs> Definitely said Rose that wrong. Okay. Basically. <laughs> he's in, he's in Serbia. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good for him. I think even, if you're playing That's professional basketball, basketball, good for you, man. Good for you. Yeah. Freddie Gillespie. Wow. There's definitely what a about, video of him singing a party in the USA at Raptors practice. What about a Paul Watson Jr. Raptor legend? I haven't heard much about him. In the Not movie. even the best Paul. If it ain't B-ball Paul, I don't want it. Paul Reed is taking the team to at least the final four. I don't think Watson he's skilled enough. In the G League. Oh. You don't need skill. Have you seen Zach E? That's true, but I mean... I don't know, B-ball Paul. Zach like is just big. Man, just man give me give me Sean Livingston, man. Sean Livingston, he'll he'll take a team all the way. Hey, <laughs> the word on the street says that in his career he never missed one mid range shot. Never miss <laughs> him, Brandon Bass. Never miss a mid range shot. Status check for you, Garrett. Uh, he is a player who last played for the Taipei Fubon Braves. So China. currently unemployed. I think he I think he went to Creighton, if I'm not mistaken. You would be don't correct. ask me how I know that. I don't want to be don't don't ask me. How I, know. <laughs> I, I just think he went to Creighton. He didn't I remember his draft Wasn't, class. Didn't Creighton just go on a bit of a run? Uh they made the 16, I think. Sweet 16. I, I like their team. Their team was really good. Rodney Cole, bro. Rodians, Rooks. Nets, Real legend, talk. fun Nets. That just, that, I, I hear that name, and the first name I thought of was Anthony Tolliver. <laughs> Pistons <laughs> legend, Anthony Tolliver. Hey, Karooks was supposed to be a centerpiece in that Harden trade. <laughs> and I, I don't remember him suiting up for the Rockets like ever. Yeah, not as because he played he 11 is. games. <laughs> Makes sense. 1.2 points per game in those 11 Man. games. Man, Center that piece is a bit of a stretch to be fair, but he was only a year removed from being a first round pick. So, or, I mean, the Rockets didn't want any players back for Harden. Apparently, they no, apparently all the good Jared players. Allen wasn't interesting. Apparently, which I, I guess they're fine now. But man, those couple years when they weren't, it's like they botched man. it for real. But now the Nets stink. They got their picks. Bro, if real that Jalen Green plus the Nets picks for Mikhail offer was real and they didn't take that, bro. Like that that's that's some severe mismanagement, to say bro, the least. I think Marx is still in the front office. He needs to go. He needs to go, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's time for a reset there, man. They need someone who doesn't care about trying to not save face. Like he cares about can... picks, man. Like, oh my god, these guys Just... haven't had their own pick consistently in like over a decade. For real, like, need to just stop trying to save face and get a fresh start in there. It's just, it's, it's time to just be done. Hit the reset. Get whatever assets you actually can back. Because, like, what are they? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy because Derek Favors was the start of the Nets not caring about trying to build and just going to get names. Yeah. Traded that boy for Darren Williams.
Derek Favors, man. What a guy. Underrated. Underrated role player. Big power forward. They should be range shots. Definitely. Good basketball player. Georgia Tech guy. What's Falco Composo doing in March Madness? <laughs> too too small of a guard. Too small of a guard, yeah, not a good shot. enough shot creator. Composo. Cause you gotta think, you're on a 16 C, so like these guys are not, you know, upper echelon talents on the D1 level. Your bigs probably aren't as good. You might have some shooters, but it's know. college basketball, so probably not. Yeah. You have guys that can knock down shots every now and then, but not shooters for real. Yeah. It's tough. Honestly, the Lama Ben is probably a really good one. Big guard. Yeah. This this yeah, version like of Ben. Yeah. I, I, I don't hate that. If you need him to get some stops on most guys that aren't a big, he can probably help with that. Yep. Arena How are we split about Gordon Hayward? That the magic full offseason plan. I do not remember that. No, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> no, I do not remember that. That's crazy. I'm about to look that up. That's that's tough. Leaking the offseason plans is tough. Gabe, do you think Alex Alex Caruso's could, could do it? Your guy? Hell no. Nah. I think I think Gordon Hayward could do it. I think, uh, <sighs> Modern day Gordon, Gordon, Gordon Hayward? Hayward? Nah. Prime definitely. He'd be way too good. But current day, did it. Nah. Damn near did it in this prime. Eight seed. I yeah. think I think Dennis Smith Jr. is giving people a run for their money. I don't know if he's good enough offensively these days to do that. I don't love his college, defense. Yeah, you don't. You say good enough offensively versus NBA. He could go to college though, and just all of a sudden and be back to Dennis Smith Jr. That that that's possible. Well, in the. Interest of time. Do we want to think about wrapping things up? Yeah, that's cool. Before we start uh, naming more random players for another hour. Yeah, on Vesley's uh, sweeping 30 point blowout every game all the way to the final four. <laughs> on Vesley getting two shout outs during an award show was crazy, but here we are. This is, uh, this is three point weekly in a nutshell, nonetheless. Goodness gracious. <laughs> if you guys are still here, we do appreciate it. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit that like button below and do subscribe. As mentioned at the top of the episode, we will be back next week for our postseason predictions with Super Mario Hoops in chat, who will be here to join us. So he can be sure to talk about all of the lovely names, such as the Rodian Karuks and the Joe Alexanders of the world. So be sure that uh, we'll have that mixed into some postseason predictions somehow next week. Don't guarantee how, but it'll be there. I can say that much. We do appreciate all the continued support. Thank you guys for tuning in for another stream, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>